Keep you waiting, complicated business. Right, hey, how are you guys? It's me, Ethan Van Skyver, a uh, 30-year veteran of the comic book industry, world's most charming, disarming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Sopranos fan and trusted member of the media. Uh, hello. Uh, hi. Hi, guys. Yeah, I told Andrew, I said, um, I'm going to get down there and do a live stream. There's no Phillies game tonight. You know, there's no reason not to. Uh, so that's what we're doing. Uh, let me let me see uh, what you guys are saying here. I got a lot to talk about. Oh, I got a live stream that I want to watch. The subject of this live stream today is about uh, swiping, uh, things like that. So we're going to look at that situation. Ton of stuff. There's just a lot of stuff to uh, to look at. Uh, let me see. Peter Orchard Studio says, I, I feel like doing a Zorro book now. You could. You might as well. Everybody else says. John Kasna says, uh, Lindell is bankrupt. Anybody have crack? No, really? The pillow guy's bankrupt? Oh, that poor guy. Jabba, the uh, ender of stream, says, F Patrick and F Sheila. Why F both of them? What did they do to you? Uh, hmm, interesting. Uh, DKM Ag says, I love Sean Gordon Murphy's artwork. I just wish he had some trading cards. See, there's always room to improve, Sean. Make some trading cards. Uh, Job of the Ender of Stream also says, uh, you know, F. Shane Davis. Oh, you know. Uh, let me see. Hail Ethan. Well, hello, Suzanne. How are you? Computer Man says, who's the girl? I don't know. I just uh, found a clip of that girl. It looked very Halloween-ish. Uh, and I thought I'd put it in the uh, in the new intro. Jabba says, uh, you like Muse. What are you getting? <laughs> yeah. I like Muse. They're a good rock band. I've been to see them, I think, twice. I think they're pretty good. Uh, Decam Ag says, did you back the book, EVS? Which book? What book are you referring to? The answer is no. Uh, Zachary says, hey, Ethan, feel like I haven't watched you uh, live in a while. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing all right. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's great to see you guys. Uh, let me see. Uh, e Ethan, your hat is the only CG merch I own. Oh, okay. Well, um, here's the... How dusty it is. I just picked it up off the floor. Um, hold on a second. Let me be bald for a minute. Let's fix my hat. Come 
much better. Much better. Uh, oh, okay. So um, all of the Comicscape merch is in. All of the t-shirts. I got some incredibly beautiful hoodies. And they are they were made only for uh, the my YouTube channel members. YouTube channel members are getting these beautiful like camouflage hoodies that say comic skate on the back. It has a big like in orange lettering on the back. It has a huge snake and it says uh, comic pros hate you like bite back. They're totally awesome. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be shipping those out pretty soon. Andrew and I looked at them uh, today and just went, OK, they fit inside of our cool poly bags. Ready to go. We got all the T-shirts. We got everything just in time for when it starts to get cold. So you guys are going to have these beautiful hoodies. Uh, and uh, those who uh, were not able to get one, you're still going to be able to get one if you're a comic, if you're a, a, a subscriber, subscriber, no, a, a channel member. If you're a channel member, you're going to be able to get one of those hoodies still. We do have some extras. Um, and then all the hats and everything, we're going to be putting that stuff up pretty soon. Uh, let me see. Yo, you think the Phils are going to win it all this year? Well, we'll find out. I, you know, I'm interested in seeing. I, I'm, I'm like a, I'm a little afraid of Atlanta. Everybody keeps talking about how great Atlanta is. Well, I mean, we, we won the last series we played against them last month. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think these Phillies are special, uh, and I think they can actually do it. Uh, have you, <laughs> EBS? Have you kept up? Cat? <clears throat> have you kept up with Dojar Cats uh, breakdown? I mean, no, is there more? <laughs> Dojar Cat is really losing it. Dojar, Joe, <clears throat> that is really hard to say. Dojar Cat uh, is a true artist in pop music. I think Dojar Cat has one good song. Dojar Cat's new song, which is uh, has a satanic uh, kind of uh, video attached to it, is also okay. Like I, I At first, I didn't think I was going to like it, but I kept hearing it on the radio, and I, I kind of like it. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I don't know. Uh, what is this? Sorry, uh, uh, Ethan. Your boy Zach isn't going to marry you. Marry you? What the fuck? We're both men. What the fuck is the matter with you? No matter how many times you talk about him. Well, uh, that isn't the objective. The objective is not to uh, get involved in some homosexual uh, thing. Uh, the thing is to uh, talk about Zach's ideas, which I always liked. You know, I, there's some there's some things he does that I don't like, some attitudes uh, that he has that I, I don't think are good. I think they're harmful for him. But, man, I'm a fan of his ideas. I really like his videos. Uh, let me see here. Need more green cyber frog hats? Narwhal, thanks for $5. Says any publicity is good publicity. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's always the case. All right, hold on. Let me catch up with you guys here so that we can get on with the show. Mike McMahon just joined. He's going to be able to get, well, because Mike McMahon joined the channel, he's going to be able to get one of the uh, hoodies, the nice camo hoodies. Uh, Pastor Flash says, got one of the original yellow and black Cyberfrog hoodies. How do we stop the black hoodie from fading? Uh, is yours fading? Mine still looks great. Uh, all of it looks good. And I've washed my my uh, black and yellow hoodie a ton of times. It's just high quality. These new camo hoodies are beautiful. I wore one yesterday, uh, and uh, they are really really nice. Uh, Dojar cat is satanic. <laughs> Dojar cat got kicked out of Muse. All right, hold on, we're catching up. Uh, all right, F Mary kills Zach Zach Zach. Uh, F all three of them. <laughs> John Kasma says. Stop it from fading. EBS stops buying from sweatshops. Uh, um, I don't make things in sweatshops. Uh, let me see. What is all this? What is, what is all this Zach shit? Zach has moved on. EBS needs to do the, the same, says the, this old goat. He hasn't moved on. He's still on YouTube talking the same shit he always has. <laughs> what the hell? Of course, I'm still. Every now and then, he'll say something good, and I will uh, cover it. Uh, all right, hold on. You guys are crazy today. Uh, PT Pusher is into the occult, says Jeb Clements. Okay, so this is the uh, this is what I saw today that made me go, "Oh yeah, I'm definitely doing a live stream today." Can't get enough of uh, swipes. I like when artists. Uh, thank you, Tacitus Jones, for joining the channel. I appreciate you. 
I can't get enough of when artists swipe other artists. To me, it's like a sin. I, I really don't like it. Uh, like, I lose respect for an artist when they do this, when they copy someone else. I don't think you should ever do that. Just strikes me as thefty. It's a little bit, it's a little bit like stealing. Uh, Patrick Thomas Parnell, uh, otherwise known as P T Party Time Patrick, uh, or P T Pusher, uh, <laughs> depending on where is John Malin. We got to get John Malin back in here. Uh, we really kind of need that. Need, need his uh, his whole uh, attitude back. <clears throat> So uh, Patrick Thomas Parnell has a, a book coming out. It's a Zorro book. And uh, this is the, the image in question that I think he is uh, skeptical about. Uh, this was his creation. He, he had the idea of kind of taking Zorro and giving him a Day of the Dead motif kind of thing. Uh, so as you can see, uh, here is Zorro with a Day of the Dead sort of mask and a mask over that and the hat. And he's holding a nice big saber and reflected in the saber right where his face would be. It's very interesting. He's got like skull teeth. He's got a spade like on a card, playing card for a nose. Uh, and uh, there you go. And then here we go. Another spade here on his sword. I don't know what that's all about. I guess it's just like Day of the Dead stuff. And then an upside down satanic devil worshiping cross uh, right on his forehead. Uh, so a good, clean fun. Uh, this is uh, this was his image. And then here's uh, another one of his images. This is a cover that he did uh, where a very thick uh, Zorro is jumping into a crowd of bad guys here. This is Zorro and the Phantasm Cult of Hollywood Hills, 1955, he's called it. <clears throat> Which is interesting because Zorro doesn't have the, uh, he's not wearing the Day of the Dead motif here. He's not wearing that mask. And he's jumping into a bunch of Day of the Dead creeps with upside down crosses, uh, with eyeballs. Which I guess is like, uh, is this the Illuminati here? Um, yeah, very interesting. So this is what Patrick did. And then suddenly he sees this. He's got uh, he's got Sean Gordon Murphy. Sean Gordon Murphy is kind of comic skate adjacent, I think. Like he holds some of the same values uh, as comic skaters do uh, and has been friendly to us in the past. But, you know, when uh, the mainstream kind of caught wind of his vibe, <clears throat> they started to kind of close in on him a little bit and try to and try to get him canceled. So he pulled back. I think it's wise. Uh, you know, um, but this is his uh, beautiful. I mean, this is just, what can I tell you? This is really mwah, amazing. Uh, and uh, on it, what is similar here? You've got a similar kind of pose to Patrick's. Uh, this is not uh, at all original, by the way. I mean, uh, we've seen this many times where somebody holds a sword up and it kind of divides their face. Uh, this is, uh, it's not completely unique, but it is interesting that it's Zorro. And then the other thing is the Day of the Dead mask. So you've got uh, Patrick Thomas Parnell crying a little bit foul here because, um, yeah, like, look, I, I did the Day of the Dead mask and, you know, I've got a cover here. My Zorro cover is close to the same thing he's turned his sword the other way around so that it's acting as a mirror and reflecting i mean the point of the cover is uh, it's acting as a mirror and reflecting this other character's face but uh it is similar and i don't know which one i like better to be honest with you you know is it this one is this one better than this one i don't know i'm not sure it's up to you it's a matter of personal taste so we've got that. And then also, let, let me just remind you of this, Zorro and the Phantasm Cult of Hollywood Hills, 1955. And then coincidentally, is this Patrick's artwork? It does, I mean, not Patrick, Sean's artwork. It doesn't even look like Sean Gordon Murphy's artwork. But anyway, it's a it's a cover uh, for Zorro, Man of the Dead, which, which is Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, book, the book in question. And uh, again, it's kind of the same thing. You've got, you know, people down here in the foreground on the ground, and you've got Zorro in midair, his boots, 
you know, dancing across the air. Let me take another look here. Uh, his sword is here in his other hand uh, there. And uh, here it's in this hand pointed at the, uh, the viewer more or less. Still, uh, startling similarities of imagery. Uh, and uh, I, of course, like I'm outraged. Uh, <clears throat> but then again, Sierra Whiskey came up with this. Here's a February 10th, 2023 post from Sean Gordon Murphy's, but he put SMG, Sean Murphy Gordon's Instagram about starting concept art. When did PTP post his? I think way before that, to be honest with you. I don't know the exact dates, but I really think uh, Day of the Dead makeup for Zora here. I think Sean's been, or uh, Patrick's been working on his for like a year or two. This is really cool, though. I'm starting the concept art for my next book temporarily called Zorro, Man of the Dead. I licensed the rights myself, so it'll be publishing under my uh, own new label, which I think is called Massive Comics. <clears throat> I looked up Massive Comics and like they're, um, you know, not to get you know too uh, too bitchy, but uh, their uh, their Twitter has like three hundred followers. Like, how is that even possible? I went and I sub I like followed them. I just went. I'm following you, dude. Why does Massive only have uh, just a handful of followers? It really doesn't make any sense. Makes you worry about comics. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, there you go. J. Scott Campbell says, nice. I know this has been something you've wanted to do a while. Glad to see it happening. So this isn't some fly-by-night thing. Um, if it's true that Sean Gordon Murphy did swipe from, or, or not swipe, but take ideas from Patrick Thomas Parnell, uh, that idea was not doing a Zorro book because uh, apparently Patrick has wanted to do, uh, or not, God, these two guys, they're both three named uh, fellows here. Uh, Patrick Thomas Parnell, Sean Gordon Murphy. Uh, apparently, Sean Gordon Murphy has wanted to do Zorro for some time. So it's not like he took the idea from Patrick, but boy, he took the Day of the Dead, the Mexican Day of the Dead motif from Patrick. Or did he? Not sure. What do you guys think? Uh, Frago says, Patrick can get fucked for all I care. That's not nice. Uh, Eric Sol. <laughs> Erica Sullivan says, I don't know. The whole Day of the Dead thing is kind of common. Uh, it's like bowler hats and shamrocks with Irish stereotypes. <clears throat> but then we see this. Uh, so odd. It's like no one's ever thought of these poses as covers before or something. So I'm, I'm, you know, getting uh, the piss taken out of me. Uh, here's a Dynamite Zorro cover, which is very similar. Um, and it came before Patrick. Here is, uh, wow, this is uh, an oldie. A Zorro cover by Alex Toth. And uh, it also looks very similar. It's the exact same layout. Uh, over here, uh, you've got another Dynamite Zorro book, which uh, one could say looks similar to Patrick's book, uh, where, you know, Zorro is kind of um, from the side, kind of dancing and, you know, in the air, and there are enemies on the ground. Uh, and yet another one here. From American Mythology Productions, similar. <clears throat> I wouldn't say this is like close to being the same, but it's still people just tend to, to draw the same thing, I guess, when having to do uh, a Zorro cover. Cisco B says this is why Comics Gate needs to be better, even more so when the public domain is being tapped on both sides. They're watching us. Remember the pitch you gave that became the last Ronin? Yeah, I do. Starblades is being ripped off by Marvel for a mobile game. It is? I didn't even know about that. What's that all about? To be fair, both emulating Alex Toth. Uh, I thought it was art from the same campaign. Lol, what the cryptomnesia? Uh, ooh, spooky. Uh, and Marduk Knight is going uh, in on uh, Sean Murphy, uh, Sean Gordon Murphy here. Dude has a case, a case of the swipes. Uh, lol, brav. I mean, it's no big brain design, but <clears throat> Smokane says both look gay as hell. Uh, but that's beside the point. PTP has a case. Uh, so, um, and we got this. 
Uh, you're a petty grifter, uh, <laughs> which is my, wherever I go, I'm followed by these clowns here. But this, of course, is not my, uh, he's talking to somebody who works at All Caps Comics, not me. <clears throat> Listen, I didn't copy Patrick Thomas Parnell. <clears throat> Why call me a petty grifter? What did I do? So uh, anyway, uh, that's the situation. I'd like to know what you guys think about all this. Uh, let me see. Um, B spin says I couldn't pick Sean Murphy Gordon out of a lineup. Uh, let me see. Makes, uh, makes no sense that an elite artist would swipe a zero artist. Eh? Um, well, you say that, right. But like, then again, it's not like he, uh, here, I think the allegation would be, it's not like he sat there and copied Patrick. Like, let me copy Patrick. Uh, it could be that he just stumbled across Patrick's campaign uh, and then copied some stuff from it. I mean, it could be. Uh, Woden shot says, uh, John Malin presents two weeks of I'm dead. Yeah, John says he's uh, he's coming back. Uh, the last Ronin swiped Ethan, says Geronimo. Well, maybe um, way back uh, three years ago, when we were talking about doing Cyber Frog Green Supremacy, which is book four of Cyber Frog, I said, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to get some money together and I'd like to license the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from whoever is going to own it at that point. Because I'd like to do a story where uh, it's 2018 and the Turtles, of course, were teenagers in the 80s, in the late 80s. Now they're middle-aged, you know. Um, and three of them are dead, and there's only one left. He's missing an arm. He has his brother's weapons, and he survived the Vespas. And Cyberfrog will team up with, uh, you know, Raphael, I think I wanted him to be, the last turtle. And uh, suddenly, yeah, there's the last Ronin. But you know what? I mean, here's the thing. Like, uh, and, and you guys all heard that. You all said, wow, that's a cool idea. Um, here's the thing. Ideas, you know, I mean, they just, they're in the air. Who knows? Like, who knows? Um, did they swipe it from me? Were they listening? Did the idea get back to them in some way? Probably, yes. Uh, Pablo Diablo says, Ethan, just got an email this morning that my Cyberfrog action figures are on the way. Thanks, and hi, Comicsgate. Oh, that's good news, Pablo. Yeah, I spent the morning in the warehouse uh, boxing up Cyberfrog action figures. It was kind of nice. It was fun. Me and Andrea. Um, sending out Cyberfrog complete sets with variant white shirt Heather Swain orders. Uh, cool. Uh, let me see. Senior Spielbergo says, uh, hey, Ethan, I just got my Heather toys from the Indiegogo campaign. I had ordered the Vespis Swarm much earlier in the campaign when it was available on Indiegogo, but I haven't received it yet. Have all the Vespis orders gone out yet? Um, No. Uh, Vespa Swarm? No, no, no. They, I don't think they've all gone out yet, but today I really focused on them because they take up so much room in the warehouse. A Vespa's case is really big and it only holds four Vespas in it. So I go through the campaign and I, I've just been kind of uh, pulling out the big orders that have multiple Vespas uh, in them so that I can kind of clear out the warehouse a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I don't, you know, uh, keep... Uh, Keep your head up, you know, keep paying attention. We'll get it out to you for, uh, pretty soon. I wouldn't worry about it. All that stuff is uh, is going out. Uh, oh, Dick. Oh, no. Dick Buttkiss died. That is the most horrible name uh, in the world. I felt really terrible about Dick Buttkiss. Uh, all right. Hold on a second here. So uh, Alfred Ortiz uh, says doubt. He doesn't think... Uh, you don't think Sean Gordon Murphy swiped from Patrick Thomas Parnell? Why? Why don't you think that? Why do you doubt that? It's right in front of you. It's pretty clear. Uh, let me see. Bob Kane was a zero. Uh, Lethal Diva says, it makes sense uh, because he knows most people haven't heard of Patrick. Who better to take ideas from? Yeah, like it's better to, like if you're going to steal from somebody, why not steal from somebody who has like no recourse? It's like, you know, some, uh, you know, small time guy is going to come out and say, he stole my ideas. You're not going to believe him. Sinister. The more we look into this, uh, the more peculiar it does look. Um, 
<laughs> was Joe Casada the fattest guy you met? He was at one point. Yeah, he was. I don't know what he looks like now, but hopefully he's lost a little bit of weight. Wyatt Prince says uh, you should look up Kentaro Miura art to see what I was talking about when I said you are the American Kentaro. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me look up uh, Kentaro Miura. Does he draw, uh, or do I draw like him? Maybe I'm copying him. Uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, dude. I think I've seen this guy's artwork before. Let me see this. I don't draw anything like this guy, though. Uh, wow, that is intense. You know who this looks like to me out of comic skate? This looks more like Joe Ball. I think Joe Ball is the American uh, Kentaro. When you look at like this kind of line work here. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, this is nice. I hope there's no pornography on this. Does he draw like pornography? Am I going to run into some pornography if I keep scrolling down? I'm a little worried about it. Um, wow, this is uh, somebody in memoriam of Kentaro. That's not him, strictly. That's not his artwork. Uh, yeah. What does he draw that like uh, makes him famous? What's his comic book? It looks like um, it looks like the stuff I used to pick up in Chinatown back in the nineties. Uh, when I was at Harris Comics, uh, I would go into New York City and I would go to Chinatown and I would get the best Chinese food in the world. And then I would, um, I'd go to these magazine shops and the magazine shops had these great Hong Kong comics that looked a lot like these. And they were very influential for my impulse run because a lot of it was about, I don't see it here, but a lot of it was about kind of smoke like when somebody runs, there'd be swirls of dust and movement around them. And uh, I love that. And it was made up of tiny little lines like this. And so I used, I, I did it the best I could for impulse, but I was just a penciler. I wasn't inking my own work. If I were inking my own work, I could have done better. I could have imitated it better. Uh, you know, penciling for an inker. But uh, yeah, let me see more of this guy. Maybe I should let myself be influenced by this dog. I mean, this uh, art. Maybe I should just like bring some uh, Asian influence into my life. Hmm. I just see so many people drawing like this or trying to draw like this. I just don't know. I don't know if it's what I want. I'm not sure if that's what I want to do. Uh, let me see. Jeb Clement says, send PTP the link. Yeah, if he wants to come in here, he's welcome to come in and talk about all this. Um, catch up with you guys here. Yurash Motaru says, Zoro, Mexican hero with the Day of the Dead mask. Not original. Oh, so, so, well, nobody thought of it before. Who thought of it before Patrick? Patrick was the first one. Hmm. Definitely uh, Joe Ball, says Michael Bancroft. Michael Bancroft, thank you so much for being on Camel Moon show last night uh, and taking a moment to call a morbidly obese guy jammed into a what looks like a 727 men's room. <laughs> I mean, the guy was like, and you go, that's Ethan Van Skyver. I was like, what the hell? I really appreciated that. Somebody sent, uh, sent me a clip of that this morning. I was like, oh, at two, Michael Bancroft, and then you got Camel Moon going, <laughs> uh, Show G.O. says, still waiting for Wreck Planet, Pie Guy. Uh, have all the books gone out that aren't honeycomb boxes? No, they haven't. Uh, received figures, they are great, waiting on books. You know, they're all coming. I got those guys working pretty hard. Uh, somebody sent me a clip of that this morning, and I was like, why would... That's that's awful. Why would Michael Bancroft say that? Like, I would expect Camel Moon to say that. Uh, but why? 
All right, hold on a second here. Uh, Ethan just called Berserk trash, Lofty fan. <laughs> Michael back on. Oh, no. Yeah. All right, hold on. I'll call it up. Yeah. Berserk is legend. Uh, legendary, you probably meant. Like, with legit in there. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I just, you know. <laughs> It was very dark of Bancroft. Does Camel Moon still have a show? He does. Although I tried to watch some of it. I didn't know they were actually doing commentary. I went in to, to watch a little bit of the show because it like th these guys like live stream at like three in the morning. And they were just kind of uh playing poker. They were playing like digital poker. And I didn't know what that was all about. Uh all right. So John Delarose and Gail Simone are a couple now. Oh, here's the other thing. Gail Simone, <laughs> that so-called show. Yes, F. Camel Moon. <laughs> Don't turn your back on an Australian, eh? Why? Thank you, Lethal Diva. Hmm. Yeah, Bancroft is now on my list with Blue Boy. Two of them. So this is Berserk, what I'm looking at right now. This, is, uh, this guy's the artist of Berserk. I don't know. I just don't like it, guys. I mean, maybe if I read the book, I would like it. If I read the book, I'd like really appreciate the way it like looks. But uh, it just, uh, I, don't, I don't know. The whole thing doesn't really appeal to me. It's not my sensibility. I want it to be because I want to make people happy that keep recommending it to me. But I, I got to be honest with you. You know, it just isn't what I like. I feel bad about that. Uh, Josiah Haynes is trying to trick me. Uh, Ethan, look up Blue Waffle. I don't think so, pal. Uh, stop bringing up manga to EVS. Never fails. Wait, stop bringing up manga to EVS. Never fails to trash those Hiroshima Taro. I don't like What am I going to do? Am I going to lie about it? I don't like it. Oh, it's great. You know, and people get really upset about it. So I've started to just kind of go, no, it's, it's wonderful. And they go, well, what is your favorite manga? And then I just Google great manga. And I come up with something obscure and I say this, that's my favorite. And they go, oh, wow, maybe you are a weeb. I'm not, not a weeb. Frosty Flames has got my honeycomb box today. Amazing. First batch of figures have shipped. Thanks, see? Oh, awesome. Yeah, I got a, a people are getting their wrecked planets and uh, just received my honeycomb box in perfect condition. And it was a pleasant surprise after a 12 hour workday. Thank you, says William App. So glad you got it. I got a little bit grouchy today because, uh, and you'll have to excuse me. I got a little bit grouchy today because <laughs> this just kills me right here. You get a little message on the campaign and it's like this. Finally got my stuff today. This is the wreck planet. Finally got my stuff today. And all I can say is staple bound. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, I did staple. Yeah, the book is put together with staples and glue, actually, because it's uh, heat. It's staples and glue, and then heat are uh, the binding of the book. Staple bound. You know what it's like to work on a comic book story for like three years and finally get it done and put it out, and the reaction you get from somebody who backed it is. You stapled it? There's staples in it? <clears throat> There's a little bit of a culture uh, in indie comics where it's just like what people seem to be concerned about is like, they go, oh, the book is quality. It has a spine and it's a high quality book. It's like, guys, read the comics. Stop worrying about how it was shipped. Stop worrying about the, the presentation so much. Stop worrying about if the paper quality is nice. I see that all the time. I see people opening up these books and being like, yeah, the paper stock is really nice. Nobody does that in comics. Like literally nobody, like fans don't do that. I've never seen that. You know, uh, they started to do it a little bit. Um, let me let me reel that back in. They started to do that a little bit towards the end of Marvel when your boy Zach was starting to notice that the paper quality had become so poor that it was actually like bleeding ink onto your fingers when you were reading it, like it would smear and the cover stock would smear. The colors were still wet on the paper and they'd smear.
but that really isn't hasn't been the case for most of the history of comics. Uh, it seems like most of the time, you know, paper is kind of irrelevant. It's nice to see some good paper stock on comics. Uh, let me see. Uh, Yurash Matar says, I just want people to stop asking you about manga. Uh, I do too, dude. I really do. Like, I'm fighting the fight. I think what people, uh, they're not comic fans, they're collectors, says Louie. Uh, yeah, but like, uh, stop worrying about China printing the book. China doesn't print Cyberfrog. Uh, I promise you it's printed here in the United States. Uh, Kenneth Day says, book is $35. Also, EVS, don't pay attention to the quality. Well, <clears throat> those are two lies. Two lies in one. You're thinking of ISOM. ISOM is $35. Cyberfrog is how much? Who knows? Who in the chat knows how much Cyberfrog is? J Bama fan uh, grabbing anus cheek says, PTP has a case. By the way, most manga sucks. Thank you. Hmm. Cyberfrog is $25. It's $25. He says, no, I'm thinking of the shipping. Oh, I'm thinking of the shipping too, dude. It's unavoidable. Pert says it's $45. It might be. Pert, if you're in Australia, it might be $45. Carson Depp says, yeah, who cares about paper quality and stuff like fluting? Uh, retarded us straight LBUs do. That's all. $420 says Rome Grown. It's $25. Uh, Bearcat74 says, am I the only one who likes the staple binding? Feels more like a comic book. Yeah, when, when putting together Trent Canuga's Creed books, he said that, like, I was like, well, we can give you a nice, we'll give you a binding. Like, you're not doing chromium, so if you want to have a spine on the books, uh, you can do that. Uh, and he said, no, he's like, I want it to be like uh, Blood Honey. I just want it to be this rad comic book with some kind of shiny effect on it. He said, rad comic book. It's like, oh, yeah, comic books, not graphic comic books. That's kind of fun. Uh, who does print Cyberfrog? I'm still looking for a new printer. Well, Al, there are a bunch of printers that I work with uh, for different projects, for different uh, things that I want to do. Uh, I saw him backwards as Mosi. Just saying, says Patrick, uh, our past master. Then. Hmm. Yurashima Taru says, 99% uh, of entertainment sucks. What is your point? Uh, and Chuck Reardon says, the binding has been talked to death. The chromium cannot be perfect bound. This has been said again and again. I know, dude. But you know what? I mean, the thing about it is, is that, you, you know, really, um, it's the very last step. Uh, and the binding to me, I, I guess I understand. Some people are like, well, I would like it to be perfect bound so that it can sit on a shelf. Yeah, I, I understand that, I guess. But um, we do it like we do it. There will be perfect bound Cyberfrog one day, uh, but not right now. And read the comic. That's all I want. I just want people to read it. Uh, Mike Partika, oh, this guy is obsessed. Thank goodness Eric July skimped on the binding quality for ice on number two. Uh, had to rip apart my cover B for scans. The reduced binding made that process so much easier. Mike, you're just looking to come in and smack uh, Eric July for any reason at all. You got to stop that. Uh, Michael Bancroft says, staples mean you can open it flat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like staples. Are you kidding me? Uh, Matt Cisco says, more Creed, please. Yeah, I would love that. But I don't want to publish it. I just don't. I, it's too much. It's too much on me. You know, it's not even the publishing. It's the fulfillment. First of all, it's the fulfillment. All of that. Producing it and fulfillment. is a lot. It's a lot of work. And I know Trent can do it. Uh, by the way, the Creed Unforgettable Tales looks amazing, says Javs Taylor. I agree with you. That book came out so good. That book came out perfect. Like, we really... I think for Unforgettable Tales 1 and 2, we were pissed. And so uh, I made the paper stock like cardboard thick. Like every page was like, oh, was uh, was Blood Honey too thin with the paper? Was it? Here you go. Here's paper that's 10 times as thick as that. How do you like that? It's like you flip it. It's like a deck of cards. Uh, 
but I think we settled down. I think uh, Unforgettable Tales number four really had good paper quality, and uh, it was just the nicest, uh, nicest book to hold. I think. You know, we're just figuring things out as we go. Smotlock says Sean Gordon Murphy was working uh, on the Zorro book for years before PTP started his campaign. There's a Bleeding Cool article about it that came out two or three months before PTP's Indiegogo. Oh, is that right? You want to send me a link to that? Hmm. Scientific Lens says nice chicken fry shirt. Yeah, some people were asking about there's there's some fans that are just like, why isn't there a chicken fry shirt? And we did make a couple of them. That's a prototype right there. As you can see, it's got a dirty joke on it, dipped in the finest honey. It's a dick joke, kind of. It's a well, it's like a dick. It's like it's that kind of joke. Uh you know, we could make more. I don't know. I just never I I didn't think they were gonna sell, so I didn't make them, but now they probably would sell. Louis Fillet says, just give him newspaper print next time. Let him cry. I don't want to. These books are important. Oh, my God. The book is so nice, dude. <laughs> for you, yes. For Ethan, always in a bind. The book is really nice. Uh, Lord Henson Comic Skater says, EVS, you even took a poll on what kind of binding we would like and showed examples. It shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah. Let me see. Who's going to F for Isom? Says, uh, who's going to F for Isom? Uh, Manoho. Yeah, it's a good point. Those of you, there are lo there's a lot of Isom bashing lately. Uh, your your comics are rad. That beard is bad. Okay. If you guys love Isom, put an F in the chat. If you, give me an F for Isom. You read the book, you love it. Put an F in the chat for Isom. Uh, Yakusei says, uh, yeah, E, uh, for $10. Read the manga before you judge the quality. And then he laughs. Not all, just Berserk. It's actually an amazing, tragic story, and I honestly think you'd like it. But only Berserk. I wouldn't recommend it, recommend any others. Yeah, maybe I would like it, you know. Wilberforce Wooster says, probably most of your backers aren't comic fans, so they want perfect binding. Hmm. Uh, EVS, let's open a chicken fry franchise. That's the plan, ultimately. David L. says, uh, thanks for actually doing a stream on your channel. Now, where's my honeycomb box? I say this out of love, no homo. We're almost done. The honeycomb boxes are nearly finished. The boys were bragging about it today. Uh, let me see where we're at. Honeycomb boxes, almost done. Uh, and I uh, told them they've got to get this whole campaign and the uh, second chance campaign done before Halloween. So uh, they're they're working pretty hard on it, and people are people are receiving their stuff, but it's just oh, every day that this is not done irritates me. And it doesn't matter how many you get out, you like you didn't get everyone's out, so there's somebody always like sending you a message saying "fuck you," where's my stuff? <laughs> it's like we just got done shipping out 500 packages. You didn't ship out mine. Where the fuck is mine? Oh. Agony, just agony. All right, let me see here. Executive honeycomb set. Where are we at? I'll show you without doxing anyone. Executive honeycomb set. Here's where we are. Uh, all right, so we've got 437 left to go. And uh, most of them are fulfilled. Two thirds, so there were 2,500 of them total. Some got refunded and then uh, got rebacked on the other campaign. 2,045 honeycomb boxes are in people's hands. That is the vast majority of them. 80%, over 80% of honeycomb boxes are currently with their owners. 437 left to go. So they're doing those tomorrow. And a lot of the ones that are left to go are like in like Korea and Israel and things like that. There are a lot of like foreign-y kind of like international uh, destinations. So uh, Andrea has to do those one by one. But most of the American stuff, most of the Canadian, uh, the UK stuff, I don't think Ireland's gone out yet, uh, which was weird. I didn't realize Ireland and the UK. I always forget that. Like Ireland is, like Ireland's in Great Britain, right? But it's not in the UK. 
Is that how it works? Something like that. Um, yeah. Josiah Haynes says Staples means it has zero effect on the amazing story and art whatsoever. Like th that's the whole thing. Like I would think if you were like waiting for Rec Planet and you finally got your honeycomb box, you'd be overwhelmed with the beauty and the quality of it. Like it really is like finding and opening the Ark of the Covenant and you get it and you go Staples. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like the brattiest thing. I just read that and I just, I laughed so hard. I thought it was great. Uh, let me see here. Life is good. Says I haven't asked in a while. Any idea when my rec second chance might arrive? Thanks, Uncle E. Before Halloween. Before Halloween. I got these guys working full tilt. I'm telling you. This stuff takes a long time to do. These packages take a long time to put together. Uh, they've got to get everything signed. Everything's got to be bagged and boarded. They got to make sure they have the card packs. The cards need to be uh, organized and packed. Packed into penny packs and then packed into the bubble mailers. They Everything's got to be put into Gemini mailers. They got to have Gemini mailers up and ready to go. Oh, God. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of work. PT plagiarist, says Manoho. All right, hold on. Let me see. What are people saying? So we got a lot of Fs in the chat. People love Isom. Love Isom. F, F, F in the chat. F in the chat. Uh, a lot of people love Isoms. F Isom, says a DKM Ag. So F Isom. Yeah, I said, you know, if Isom, uh, let me see. Alfred Ortiz says Isom is as mediocre as could be. I don't think you read it, Alfred. Uh, Dark Gift Comics presents says uh, you can still publish Creed and others. Just contact out fulfillment, contract out fulfillment to Critical Blast, while still keeping Cyberfolk fulfillment in house. Yeah, but Trent can do that too, right? Like Trent could just uh, like why do I have to do it? Uh, Wr Winter says EVS, you only dislike anime because you haven't watched my favorite anime. That's what everybody says. But I mean, it really is kind of um, like anime and manga. It really is kind of a thing. Like it's a vibe, you know. And uh, I've watched it, and I've I've uh, never never really clicked with the vibe. So I don't know. Smartlock says it does look like Sean Gordon Murphy was swiping PTP until you find out that Sean Gordon Murphy was working on it prior to PTP. Not saying he didn't swipe some art, but his project is older. Well, is it possible the PTP is swiping SGM? Did we get it backwards? Is that a possibility? Because, like, if Sean Gordon Murphy was doing it first, is it possible that Sean was swiped by Patrick rather than the other way around? Hmm. Don't know. Um, yeah, anything's a possibility. All right, we're going to be e-fapping a video today. Uh, 200 Watt Studio says, thanks for three honeycomb boxes. I only ordered one. Just kidding. Oh, but did you get the one? I would be so mad if you got three and you just ordered one. Uh, David L says, uh, I just want the campaign to end. I want spoiler discussion with you on stream, EVS. I have some questions. Yeah, we'll get to do that. Looking forward to it. Um. Zachary says, uh, what are your go-to movies to watch during the Halloween season, eh? Uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, Ed Wood stuff. I really like the uh, classic Universal Monster movies. Uh, also, uh, I really enjoy the Omen movies. I enjoy the Exorcist movies. Um, that's about it. Like, I, Poltergeist is good. The problem is Andrea is a scaredy cat. I love horror movies. I like movies about ghosts, especially my favorite, but Andrea hates horror movies and she hates to be scared. And she says, I won't be able to sleep. I won't be able to sleep. And she's not kidding. She won't be able to sleep. So she won't watch any horror movies with me. And there's a UFO horror movie that's free on Hulu called, uh, you'll never escape us or something like that. And I started to watch that. I was like, Whoa, this is really pretty good. And she, uh, she left the room. She was like, I'm not watching this. I said, it's you if they're aliens. She wouldn't watch it. So I don't get to watch horror movies the way that I, I used to. I'm mostly watching YouTube. I, I really am. Like if I watch uh, anything other than YouTube, uh, it is, it tends to be like Better Call Saul, 
or I'll watch The Sopranos for the millionth time. Uh, Alfred Ortiz says uh, that's more likely that Sean swiped or that Patrick swiped Sean. Hmm. Uh, Ethan, watch Death Note. I'm the same way. Just do it. Really? Okay. I don't want to, though. Uh, Enrique says, uh, EVS, what do you have planned after Cyberfrog is done? Uh, <laughs> wait, Matt Six Bar says, Patrick, T wait, PTP is fucking delusional if he thinks Sean is looking at him for ideas. Uh, yeah, but you know, you say that, Matt. You don't, you know, you don't know that for sure. I mean, you don't know that Patrick didn't uh, create something that inspired Sean to create something of his own. It's possible. You know, it's possible that he stumbled across. Uh, <laughs> it's possible that he stumbled across Patrick's work and just went, "Yeah, I'm going to copy this." And who's going to stop me? Uh, and after all, like, who would stop him? Because I mean, you know, even now, like, uh, Patrick's like, uh, "I'm being swiped," and then everybody is kind of like, uh, "You're not being swiped. You're delusional." It's a perfect crime. Think about it. Uh, EVS, what do you have planned for after Cyberfrog is done? Rainbow the Brute is the main thing. Uh, what do you mean? Like after Cyberfrog is done? It's never going to be done. Uh, it'll never be completely done. I, I have Cyberfrog stories to tell forever. It's important. I'm really enjoying uh, working on Cyberfrog. Uh, this is um, something that is kind of on my mind right now. I get to work on a little bit of this in between Rainbow the Brute. It's putting a little effort into it, but... It's definitely something I think about like all day. Uh, this is uh, young Heather Swain. And uh, this is a piece that's up on Twitter. You can go take a look at it. It's a look of work in progress, trying to figure out like what Heather was like uh, before Cyberfrog came around and like why she is the way that she is. And I talked to Andrew about it all day today at the warehouse. We're sitting there putting out these uh, toy boxes. And I'm just like, of course, like, yeah, this is, you know, this and this and this and this talking about the story uh, and uh, very excited about this idea of uh, young Heather Swain and a, a series that's going to be called earth is for everyone. And yeah, it's going to be really cool. I hope you like it. Uh, let me see. Yeah. You don't know. You don't know what's going on there. Um, so that's mainly it. I mean, everything's going to be cyber frog. I will do cyber frog, cyber frog universe stuff. I think forever. I'd like to do that for the rest of my life. Uh, Son of Liberty Radio says PTP posted concept art from uh, like 2010. Balls in your court, Sean Gordon Murphy. Balls in your court. PTP says 2016. He's been working on this. Hmm. A lot of people are uh, going back and forth. <laughs> Obi Wanner says, I don't live. Oh, wait, Ethan, I backed the honeycomb box at minute one. Don't live in Korea and got nothing yet. I don't, I don't know, dude. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm doing my best. Uh, the helpless Johnny says, got all my books this week. Thanks, EVS. See what I mean? Like they are coming. I, I don't know why yours haven't, but they are coming. So eventually, I feel like yours will come too, Obi Wanner. I feel like eventually they will show up. Uh, just they have to. Michael Bancroft says maybe no one swiped anyone. Hmm. Peppermint. I don't like that idea. I, I like the idea that somebody is uh, swiping someone. Peppermint oil capsule. Thank you for the uh, super sticker. I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> I like the idea. I like the idea that people are swiping each other. Uh, yeah. It's a list of things. Snowman, Rainbow, Dark Harvest, Red Extermination. Snowman came back with another uh, another printer, another bid for uh, the books. I think I told you this two days ago. I don't know what's going on. We were doing, a, you know, we did a $15 Snowman book. And I cannot, I said, I want this book to cost $5 to make. It, it can't. It's coming back eight, nine, ten dollars to make this book. She was sixteen years old. No, she's thirteen years old here. This is thirteen-year-old Heather Swain. Heather's just sixteen years old. 
Uh, let me see. Adventure 2 says, you didn't model uh, Heather Swain off Antos, did you, EVS? Uh, no. Uh, Heather Swain. What was Heather? Uh, I don't know where I got the name Heather from. Her last name, Swain, was from a girl I knew in church that I was dating. That was her last name. I dated her a little bit. And her dad took me and sat me down and said, what are your intentions with my daughter? And I said, uh, I just want to take her to the movies and stuff. What do you mean? I think they were like, uh, they wanted to see if I was serious so I'd marry her. I was only like, I was a kid. I was like 18. It's like, I'm not marrying her. Just, we're, we're, you know, just having fun. And so uh, that was that. <laughs> that ended that. These Mormons don't play around. But I like the name Swain. I liked her last name. So I think I, at the time, I created Heather Swain. And so I gave her the name, the last name Swain. Um, but no, she's definitely not. I don't know where Heather came from. What did Heather? Who was Heather? Did I know any Heathers? Shipbird Militia says, thank you for the stream. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, all right, let me see. They say uh, he probably pa Alfred is not believing any of this, saying that uh, Patrick probably wrote it, wrote 2016 on it today. A lot of conspiracy stuff here. Uh, all right, so uh, I want to watch this uh, YouTube video here. Turn watch Studio says young Heather Swain. She's only 17. Daddy says she's too young, but she's old enough for me. Oh my god, she's 13. 13 with that figure? How is that a little girl's figure? What are you talking about? <laughs> what is going on? You know what? I'm worried about this book now because I think if I put this book out, what do you mean figure? She has no figure. She's a kid. Put this book out. A lot of people are going to say some weird stuff. Heather's the movie, maybe? Heather's starring Winona Ryder. Like, that occurred to me, but I don't think that was a big part of my... I don't think that was a part of my life. Graph Web says, for God's sakes, cancel Disney Plus. Uh, Base Clef. I knew a girl. I actually knew a Heather. She went to, again, she went to my church. And she was an older girl. She was maybe two years older than me. And she was an art student. And I did like her. I thought she was really cool. I didn't like her like her. But I thought she was a cool girl. It's possible that I took Heather from her i don't know like that's the only heather that i can think of from my life um got my five pack og toys just now but i'm out of town can't wait to see the me ha uh hail all caps comics hail the chat nice a lot of people getting those uh all right here is the uh sean gordon murphy article uh about it yeah, it's just uh interesting all right catching up with you guys Heather Locklear, you think? Hmm. Yeah, I know. 200 Watt Studio, I know. Uh, okay, hold on a second here. Let's uh, let's go over and let's watch the video. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> there's a thing that goes on uh, in Comicsgate that drives me kind of nuts. And I'm going to watch a video that's going to make me angry. Why would I do this? Why would I watch a video that makes me angry? I don't know I'm going to. See these three words, bend the knee? This bugs the shit out of me. By the way, Matt Barr, I did send you the link if you want to come in. And uh, I sent it to Shane Davis, a couple other people too. We'll see if, what Shane's doing later. Bend the knee or you're not CG. I'll be right back. Hey, what's up, David Williams? Nice to see you. Oh, can we get past all this? 
can't yeah, see the thing. Really need to be a CG because we all know CG is a terrible, evil organization that is just full of hate. <laughs> and I will not put up with it. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah, right. oh, yeah. You know what? Oh, the the is there. I love fan. <laughs> You tell me we need that for this topic. <laughs> I do not recognize your disclaimer. See, here's right. the thing. You you can be yeah, full on CG agree. without bending the knee, perhaps. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think... disagree. Oh, Wait, really? To disagree? Well, see, that's I'm just sorry. it. If you I'm disagree with that notion. All right, so I'm going to put him up over here on this side. All right. I'm going to put sure. me in the middle. There's this idea that really makes me angry uh, that um, here's the thing. Here's what I want to say just at the outset of this conversation, which is I'm sure going to be fascinating. These people. Um, I, I promote other people's campaigns because like I want to bring some people along with me because Cyberfrog is successful and I want to see other indie uh, creators succeed. Mostly what I want to do is uh, I want to uh, bring along some of the guys who are actually making uh, the uh, who actually made a living in comics. Uh, you know, when when I was being canceled, uh, I belonged to a private room on Facebook. It was called Pros and Cons. And it was all the conservatives who were kind of scared that were in the mainstream comic book industry. Everybody was in there. Mike S. Miller was in there. Doug Tenaple was in there. So many others that you know now uh, were in this, this room, pros and cons. Billy Tucci was in there. And um, people were not getting work, and we would exchange stories about what was happening. We were like, this was back in 2014, 15, 16. We were watching things change for the worse, and we were kind of warning each other. We had each other's backs. Uh, and then I got canceled, and these guys were scared, and they were just like, dude, what's happening to you? Like, this is, it was awful. It was like, uh, really, really like dreadful. Um, and when I did Cyber Frog and I made $500,000, uh, I was like, um, I think I'm going to have to make something more from this. It can't just be about me. Like, I can't just be the guy who's making $500,000 on crowdfunds while nobody else is. That doesn't seem like a good use of this uh, gift that I'm being given. By the way, welcome Matt Six Bar to the show. Thank you very much. Hail the chat. Hail. Uh, Alfred Ortiz calls it a support group, and he goes, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, it kind of was, asshole. I mean, you know, uh, people were being forced out of work for their politics back then. So, um, but anyway, I just said, I'm going to try to get as many people funded as I can. And Matt, you know, what happens is, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people who there, there are people who do artwork and comic book artwork for a living, right. And have, are used to paying their bills with it. That's you. That's me. And there are some people who are like hobbyists and want to do it for a living. Uh, and because they're kind of conservative or they have, they hold the uh, right of center views or for whatever reason, uh, they're going to have some difficulty breaking into the mainstream uh, or maybe they're just not ready yet to be in the yeah. mainstream, but still they're okay. They should be able to fund their own books. Well, um, I just wanted to bring along the pros, but it, it kind of became clear that like, uh, if I did that, there would be a lot of people looking at us with envy and anger and rage. Cause it's like, you're not helping us. These guys are just, they think, I guess we're just the little guy to them. So my first response to this was, Maybe I better bring along some quote unquote little guys with me, right? What a fucking mistake that was because bringing along the little guys led to this idea that like there was a class system within Comicsgate um, that uh, was dictated by me. And in order to be a part of this or, or get to be on my show and get a little help, you got to bend the knee, you got to kiss the ring. Uh, and you know what that does to people when they hear that? That yeah. engenders hatred and rage. Mm -hmm. That makes people angry at me. And it makes people think I'm a dick when I'm only trying to help a few people. Uh, and uh, it, it's infuriating. It really is infuriating. So we've got Dojo Kun here. Do you know this guy? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've been around for almost almost three years now. And I've, I've had some interaction with Dojo. Almost, <laughs> almost from the beginning. 
I've had interactions with him. They seemed okay. They seemed all right. Uh, you're calling him they. You've given him the pronoun they. Shit. He seemed okay. <laughs> he seemed fine. You've misgendered him as non-binary. I, did. I totally misgendered him. I mean, he's <laughs> already got me blocked. I don't know what the fuck I did to the dude. Gable Pennyshot says conservative whisper network. Uh, more like I'd say a support group. I, Whisper Network would uh, assume we had any power to hurt anyone. We didn't have any power. Uh, yeah. Smotlock says, uh, EVS loved your interview on JDA's channel. He cut yeah, it way too true. short, though, stopping after your return to DC. He needs a part two. Yeah, that um, was a good one, dude. That was really good. Just listening to all the stuff about the X Men and Grant Morrison and the emails and what was going back. I mean, that's like good, deep dirt lore, dude. That's good stuff, man. <laughs> Marvel's messed up back then. It was crazy. Marvel's People crazy. Were just... I, I've been to Marvel a couple of times in like the late 90s, and you called it out, dude. It was like just boxes of shit stacked up on top. It just seemed very cluttered when I went to visit. You know, like, yeah. well, like the editor was like, here, let me move some stuff and like had to move shit. So I had a place to sit down. But mm -hmm. then when I went to DC, it looked like Gotham City. You know, like it was just all like fucking really cool and like laid out really cool. It was just, I don't know. It's a shame that they, it was cleaner. They there. Yeah. yeah, it looked like a doctor's office. I always say, like, I go in there and the walls are painted white and there's, it's beautifully decorated. And, you know, they have just trophies from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, DC Comics past, you know, up there. Uh, and Marvel, yeah, it looked like a fucking dorm. Like it just, <laughs> yeah, it, dude. It was just awful. It looked grimy. It was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, just shit stacked up everywhere it was weird all right so here we go so we're gonna watch this now um what dojo kun wants to let people know is so you don't have to bend the knee to me to be comic skate you don't have to do that all right no nope. you don't have to bend the knee i know it seems like you have to but you don't have to because i'm the moderator yeah. and now what John. does he have to do jake i'm on top baby. john what? dojo is now the mediator so he is out of here to be selected by but you get i hate that idea so much it makes me so mad somebody Matt. to be your teammate on this debate what, you the, think he's a moderator Peter? what the fuck is going on fanta or i'm not sure to help you debate all, yourself send it for me send it for you yeah, that's uh, right. a, a cyber select, fellatio i was gonna say if you collect if you select correctly you might win there's that <laughs> the grand prize <laughs> too much pressure uh, okay i pick Bionic bro. <gasps> Ooh. All right. Oh, so he's already doing? in place. So Peter and Fanta, your position will Thank be you. that yes. in order to be CG. I think it can go faster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Would you like to change your mind now? <laughs> <laughs> so yes. and then, as usual, I, I'll try to, you know, express some views on both sides of the debate. But of course, as there moderator, is no debate. what we'll do is, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that everybody gets a chance to voice their opinion. And we're going to start with you, Don, as the guest. Why is it? that in order to be CG, you don't necessarily have to bend the knee. Well, that depends don't. the definition, of course, of bending the knee and whose knee you're bending it for. Well, I think the reason I said this is I think some people, and I do not want to give, I don't want to use their names because I don't want to call anybody Fucking out. pussy. Some people, I know, some I people though that feel that if you don't pledge allegiance to either them or their views, that you, you don't qualify to be part of CG. And um, so what do you think about that? First of all, I'm old. Can you remind me what my place is again? What's my position? Am I for this or against? Oh, that's right. I'm against it. Okay. Sorry. I had a momentary lapse of civility. Okay. The thing is, if you bend your knee, you're coming off looking like a sucker, as far as I'm concerned. So don't bend the knee. You're in CG number one because you have an independent spirit, right? You don't want to fall along behind the uh, the marching orders of some other guy. So you're in this game. You're independent. You make your own rules. You speak your own mind. You be your own fan thing. So you don't bend the knee. You proclaim you are who you are, what you believe in, what you're doing for. And then See, they, they, he set up this thing now where there's such a thing as bending the knee. Uh, and it's like, well, this is why you don't have to. It's like there is no bending the knee. That's not a thing. That's You're crazy. a jealous pussy. You want to be, you want more attention on this show. You want more attention from some of the guys who are getting more funding. You think you deserve it and you're not getting it. And you think the reason why it's not happening is because you haven't, quote, unquote, sucked the right dick. Uh He's been on your show a bunch of times, Dojo. A bunch hasn't of he? times. He's yeah, been on your but show a bunch of times promoting both of his campaigns. So, I mean, you've given him all the fucking leeway that I think, you know, somebody deserves at, at that level, you know? Yeah, I just, uh, yeah. I, this is, and by the way, this is the thing about it. It's like it doesn't pay because 
once you bring somebody on board, you need to keep them here all the time, even when they're fucking boring. I mean, this is the thing. I want you on the show if you can talk and you can have a conversation. If you can't, you're not going to stick around long. I just, you know, I'll tell people about your book and stuff, but I can't have you sure. on the like on the show all the time when you're just not really a, a talker. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the second you stop bringing them, they immediately become ass blasted like this. I've noticed it for seven years. I've seen this happen. Has it been seven years? How long has it been? Seven, uh, 17. What's that mean? Like six years? Six years. All right, let me see. Tell everybody else. That's a point for Don. <laughs> and so, huh? Well, maybe Peter has something to say about that, Peter. Right well, I do have a few, uh, well, at least a question. I'm not sure. Where does this like come from exactly? Because I've heard on Twitter, People who get in the back rooms and then they say, oh, there's all these people back there and they're bending knees and all this kind of stuff. I have never seen it outside. I'm not in those back rooms. But I got to say that I don't necessarily think it's about whether you have to bend the knee in your CG or not. I do think that some of these bigger creators have big audiences. And if you would like to get into some of their audiences or, or get in their sphere, you know, you want to get uh, acknowledged by them, you're definitely going to get a lot more sales. Ultimately, this comes down to comic books. And if you are graced at a guess uh it's not really on the books anymore i'm yeah, sorry, Dan, to Dan? sorry to interrupt but it's no no that's fine totally anymore. is it city or again <laughs> yeah definitely uh if you <laughs> if you if you're not it's building your own audience right and you have and you actually want to get some of that extra help that support from some of the bigger creators in comics gate i think that you it's not necessarily about bending the knee but you definitely want to be respectful i think if there are people in these whatever places that are doing stuff considered bending the knee I, are they selling books is it helping them because i don't think guys get your own audiences Build your own platform. Build your own platform. Then you don't have to worry about getting kicked off of any shows. You don't have to worry about getting butt hurt. You're just building your own platform. And if the big guys notice you, then fucking cool. And if they don't, just keep fucking doing what you're doing. And eventually they will. Um, What's his name? Who was the guy who was in here all the time? Oh, I'm having a, a lapse of memory. And he was doing the Mermaid book. And he did... uh. Oh, what's the guy's name? The Merkmaid? Not Merkmaid. He was doing a book about mermaids. It was called Mermaids. Um, and uh, Adam Post. I'm sorry, Adam Post. I apologize for that. So Adam Post was in here uh, for a little while. And, you know, he actually, he was on the show a lot. He was always mm -hmm. on the show um, because he answered the call. He was in the Comics Gate green room. And whenever I put the link in there, he was like first in the chat. He was like really dedicated and wanted to get his books out there. Um, but I found out that he was he wasn't making the books himself. He was buying the content from other web uh, creators. I said, I can't have you on the show because I need you to at least be making the books yourself in some way. I don't I don't like that you're not you're just repackaging other people's work. Uh, and he yeah. went, OK. And he went he wasn't mad or anything like that. Uh, I haven't heard from him really since, even though he's probably watching now. He's in the chats. Uh, Adam went and he went, fuck it. I'm going to build my own platform. What do I need Ethan for? And he's out there every day making videos. I don't know if you've seen Adam Post lately. I still follow him on YouTube. This guy's pumping out these videos where Disney is panicking all the time. <laughs> he's making Dude. Disney panic videos. And uh, I got to say, I mean, uh, I, I think I would rather die than make these videos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's enough where I, I like I watched like the last episode of Osaka or whatever the fuck it's called. I'm like. Yeah, all right. That sucked. Like, I, I don't like want to go make a video because there's already like eight people making videos. So I just like go outside and like use my wood chipper. You know? Yeah, yeah, that would probably be a better use of your time. <laughs> it's like ah, fuck it. That shit sucked. Let me go outside. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch any of the videos, and I it's hard for me to even. It's hard for me to make videos like that. But look at this woke Disney disaster, woke ESG scam backlash. Disney only care woke shut down. Bud Light was a big deal for him. Oh, let me see all his videos here. I don't know what it is. You got to make the... They all look the same, all the thumbnails. He's <laughs> grinding, though. Look at him all. Dude, this is what you do. This is two weeks ago, 12 days ago. How many does he do a day? Three hours, 22 hours ago, one day ago. Roughly two per day on average, I would guess. About two a day, yeah. Uh, he's out there making these videos, uh, which are... Wow, they're... His layouts for his fucking thumbnails are amazing. Flames. Yeah, they're consistent. You know, Aerial bold. 
<laughs> this dude, I'd want to kill myself. I, I couldn't do this all the time. Like at least when I'm making like clickbait, like I want them, I want the thumbnails to look different. Yeah. But yeah, I go, oh, this will be kind of clever if I do it this way. I know that nobody gives a fuck, but like for the pre kings, I'll spit, I'll like sit there for like a couple of hours, like kind of working a little thumbnail, you know, like just moving shit around and like. I know nobody's going to give a fuck, but it's like, you, you got to like put some panache to it. You know, you got to fucking care. Look at this panic at Bud Light sales drop 70% to 90%, uh, not 31% as previously reported. That's the title of a video. 101,000 views. Get it, girl. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, 75,000 views for Target getting trash, Bud Light. You know, people like this. People like the anti-woke content. Anyway, sure. if, if you want to make this like melt brain content, like uh, you can and or or make something that's actually like uh, not melt brain, but like he doesn't need me anymore. Yeah. He's not going to come back to me and say, I really need to be on your show to sell a comic book. And the reason why is uh, he's probably bigger than me now. Let me take a look and see what his subscriber count is. Uh, oh, no, he's not. But he's still getting more views than me. 30,000, 30.3 thousand subscribers. Wow. He's still calling himself Half Speed Tucci, which is <laughs> what I called him. I said, you talk like Billy Tucci, but slowed down. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's funny. It's still there. So, I mean, look, uh, you know, make, uh, make your own platform, right? Like, why yeah. are we having discussions about bending the knee? Like who does that? What kind of people talk about bending the knee and whether you need to do it or not? The answer is you don't need to do it. The only reason you need to bend the knee, uh, is if you're trying to get something, um, that you haven't earned. Okay. And that's, that's all I want something that I haven't earned. Well, you're not my friend. My friends are on my show. Uh, you're not my friend. Um, and you don't really truly belong here. So go get your own audience. It has nothing to do with being comic skate. You're talking about being on my platform. Oh, God. Adam Post forever, says DLA. Yes. Uh, fantastic. He's really good. Uh, let me see. Does he still want to make comics with Michael Bancroft? I don't know. You should ask mm -hmm. him. I mean, that's, I don't know why you, you would ask that. I would just say like, are you saying, cause he's probably making more money doing this probably is. But Two if videos. he's not creating, maybe he can like curate, you know, get some a writer or get a, get an artist together. But yeah, if he's making more money, like doing his aerial bold thumbnails, then why would he do anything else? Uh, Alfred Ortiz says, am I crazy? Did Dojo even say he believes this? So this was just a debate for fun. He believes this, Alfred. Him saying it's a debate for fun, that's just a pose. He's in back rooms. He's blocked me on Twitter. Uh, he's acting like a... Uh, here's it. Well, all right, let me watch the rest of this. I don't know, dude. Uh, it does bother me. Now, I don't care if you do any of that, but this whole thing spreading this like idea that you need to kneel to me in order to be comic skate obviously is poison. Uh, so that uh, that annoys me. All right. Think that that behavior is something I would do, but honestly, would be pretty respectful to the people who are helping me sell my comic book, and maybe to some people that might that might be considered bending the knee. But uh, I think it's respect. Would you would would these grumblings happen in the back channels with Graham Nolan? Would it happen if if we how are we going to get bigger creators to help expand? You know the the community. Uh, if we're not being, well, I, I don't understand why certain creators like Ethan and John get so much flack for i guess being gatekeepers is the only way i can imagine because i have no idea exactly what the details are that spark the what are they gatekeeping they're gatekeeping their own two channels it's not like they're gatekeeping the whole community it's just that's, their two channels that's right it's not even gatekeeping it's just like yeah i'm not really feeling what you're giving me dude i'm gonna like show some other stuff on your channel it's it has nothing to do with what you're doing or what you're able to show on your own channel it's no there's no gatekeeping with these two guys well, you create a gate, a gate like uh, when like you allow some people in, and then not others, right? Like, wait, uh, you, you've got ten spots on your channel, and I mean, I guess if you, I, yeah, you do have like personal like gatekeeping preferences, like you know, I guess you can call it gate gatekeeping that I, I like, I won't fuck a tranny, you know. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's like that's that, that's gatekeeping. 
I don't uh, male and gay date real two. women, you know. But I'm yeah. saying, but like, I don't know. You're not you're not being gatekept from a whole community by by not by not participating with two channels. Yeah, John Malin will let these guys on though. Yeah, he, he does. He does that comic skate like uh, present show where he just doesn't care. Like he's just like all aboard, and yeah. then he, he fills up his, and they're just like nine people going. So I'm launching a comic book, and it's and, and John just sits there for like I think he gives him like an hour or nine. Dude, those minutes. are the best. And I'm just, just like, like, okay, give me what you got, and yeah. then they just kind of like drone through whatever kind of like bullshit that they have, and he's like, all right, cool, okay, who's next? Yeah, okay, cool, yeah. So anyway, next up is, oh, yeah, he doesn't involved. really question the campaigns or like ask questions. He's just like. <sighs> Okay, it's almost yeah. like a uh, like community work for like a, a public defender or something. You know what I mean? Where That's it's exactly like, what it's like. Okay, isn't it? what do you what are you in for? Okay, drunk driving. Oh, you beat your wife. Okay, yeah. I'll, okay, come on in. You know. Mm. Uh, what is this? JDL? Do you mean John Delarose? He went on Owen Benjamin yesterday. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. <laughs> that guy doesn't believe in panda bears. Like he thinks there's some sort of fucking Chinese genetic psyop. Really, panda bears are. That's what. For he what thinks. reason? Like, why would they be a, a genetic psyop? I don't know. He's like, yo, there's there's no uh, panda documentation or art before the 20th century. So, is that true? I googled it, and I, I don't know. You know, you start looking at Asian artwork, and you can't tell like if it was done. That's last how I week feel about manga. Fucking- yeah, yeah. I'm like it all looks the same. I don't really know. But like, then there was an article that said they found an emperor's tomb that was two thousand years old, and it had uh, a panda skeleton in it. So I, I don't know. How people, did they know it was a panda skeleton? The panda uh, skeleton through DNA. Different. They're able to like look at the the skeleton and the way it's structured. They were able to look at the the shape and the size of the skull and be like, oh yeah, this panda. And then they did a DNA testing and and we're like, yeah, this panda's from. This region. Wow. And then that emperor's mother had a tomb and she had just a skull of a panda in her tomb. So I, I think they, they they were around before the 20th century. But me and JDA are just like going back. I'm just like, you don't believe in pandas? Yeah, like maybe yeah, uh, maybe do. there's something to it. You would think pandas would be in art everywhere. It's like I'm surprised right? here that it, they, they aren't. But then I'm wondering, well, maybe they weren't discovered. Maybe they were in a remote area of China kind of like um uh, highland gorillas you know nobody had like a real photo of a highland gorilla until you know the 40s but they were there you know anyways it's, should be a good show JD. did uh did, were there panda bears on noah's ark of or course. did they come after There's at the least ark? two there were two i mean there were at least two on the ark um how? How could there be if they're from like China and uh, Noah's Ark happened somewhere? We know that he landed his Ark. We know scientifically his Ark landed on Mount Ararat, uh, mm-hmm. which is uh, a mountain uh, in Armenia, I think. Right. Or is it Turkey? Somewhere in the mid. Yeah. The mid area. So it's spread out. I don't know. You know, pandas. I think they're real. I think there is a couple of pandas on, on the Ark. I mean, do I think. Uh, a chihuahua was on the ark? No, there was just like a regular dog, and then eventually be like bred it into whatever the fuck we made it. But I think there was yeah. pandas. Anyways, were there stick insects on the ark? I would say yes. Were there fish on the ark? No. Then why did they say two of every animal? Well, the fish don't need to be on the ark because they're rocking and rolling in all that all that water that's outside. It's all like uh, like land based animals. And and airbound, you know, he had a whole bunch of space for uh, avian species. <laughs> did you ever see that movie Noah? Yeah, I did. I watched some of that. That was weird. I don't. That know was that. fucking crazy. It was like uh, it was like Lord of the Rings meets the Bible, but you know, he had uh, all the animals in there, all nice and neat and fucking chilled. Yeah, I didn't Unlike see a these panda on that in that movie though. Did you? I didn't. I don't recall seeing a, a a camel. A dodo. Was there a dodo bird on the ark? 
Some good. I didn't that see did. it, Dodo. Did you see it, Dodo? <laughs> a blue footed booby? I saw no. two of those. <laughs> I'm down. Tasmanian with art. tiger. Was that on the Tasmanian? That's a tiger. good question. It is is the, was the ark so far in the past that there was like new animals evolving from those original stock? Is that what you're asking? Like, uh, or like, was there like some some bears on the ark? And then after a few thousand years, they started breeding and created panda bears later on. No. It's Was there comics. a Komodo dragon know. on the ark? Komodo dragon? <laughs> what do you think? I got to say yes, because. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but how would they get? Were there kangaroos on the ark? I would say yes. Answer carefully. How the I, hell? I don't know. Would Noah retrieve a kangaroo from Australia? Well, when Noah was building the ark, I think maybe the land masses were closer together. There were some land bridges. You know, God's not going to just like leave some some of his his creation on a on an island. So he he connected all the all the the, uh, the land masses. Then had the the flood. Dealt with all the nephilim and all the other bullshit. Then once uh, he allowed all the animals to spread back out. Mm -hmm. And then the 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 ground and plates started moving, and then you know you're able to like get your fucking wombats and your 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 wallabies and shit. But I think there's probably just you know some kangaroos. I'm just making shit up as I go along here. But yeah, you know the kangaroos like went down and started fucking, and then they made like other different types of of kangaroos. But I, I think the god had a plan. Were there two black people on the ark? I mean, Noah could have been black, for all I know. They never really say, like, what color the, those people are. Were there two Puerto Ricans? No, there was not two Puerto Ricans. They were in a... No, wait, no, that's Cubans. I was going to say they are in, like, a little raft, like a little dinghy and fucking... What I'm like trying to say is that, thing. like, uh, you know, um, every other race of human would have died except for like Noah's family. We assume from biblical text that Noah is Caucasian. Mm -hmm. You know, we assume from the photographs that we've seen, the film footage. Uh, Russell Noah Crow, is, he's a white guy. Was Caucasian, yeah. So <laughs> black people would all be gone. Uh, and uh, Latinos and Asians would all be gone. Do you think that like the once uh, Noah was able to, and his offspring were able to like spread back around the, the world that they started to like get their their different features you know how would noah even know that the world was flooded he has a tiny perspective like he was possible. cold wasn't he well right now like new york city times square is flooded uh if you're like if all you knew was times square why would wouldn't you assume like the entire world is flooded yeah and what do you mean he was told? You know, God said, I'm going to flood the world. Like, what does the world mean to somebody like Noah? I mean, he doesn't know. He doesn't. It's probably a really small world. Like but, you know, if world. you look around the, the globe, a lot of different ancient cultures have, have flood have flood myths. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think something definitely happened. You know, whether it was uh, a meteor, you know, that hit. Uh, Iceland and caused all kinds of uh, calamity around the globe. I think I think something definitely happened, though. Were there two midgets on the two arc? midgets? Uh, midgets are abominations. Um, I agree. They don't have souls. All right, so let's find out about bending the knee to be part of Comics Gate. I keep hearing, I keep hearing about the debates, but I don't ever hear the details of why are we fighting. Uh, time and time again, the the actual details don't come out, and I'm at a loss for that whole thing. I don't see any of it as bending the knee. I do see respect, I see disrespect, and I know if if uh, Todd McFarlane was in the group, I wouldn't be doing anything to disrespect Todd McFarlane, and I don't understand how some people feel comfortable doing that with some of the other creators that are big name creators Peter who Orchard. have big audiences that are helping. By the way, uh, we're going to stop gatekeeping Peter Orchard. Uh, he is welcome now uh, to uh, be on the show. Peter Orchard, you are welcome to join us. Simple as that. Thank you for bending the knee uh, on this show. <laughs>
<laughs> he is literally bending the knee here. Peter Orchard, welcome. He's in the chat. He says, nice. Yeah, you win. Simple matter of uh, being just being decent. I mean, he's yeah. just being like common sense decent. No, it's it's like it's not even respect. It's just like understand that nobody owes you anything. And if somebody's going to do you a favor like this by trying to help you succeed, thanks. I appreciate it. That's all. Uh, and then uh, not not really expecting anything and understanding it's still your job to uh, to take you from there. That's all. Small yeah, creators I always joke about sell it being their like Johnny books. Carson. Is that bending the knee? Uh, no, am I bending the knee by feeling that way? If I am, then I guess I'm bending the knee, but I think of it more like picking up an axe or picking up an oar or two oars or whatever the saying is this week. It's <laughs> it's like a fight. <laughs> and it's weird because we're talking about selling comic books, which I want to do for fun. I think it's a great, fun hobby to do. I think it's a great thing to get kids into again. Mm -hmm. And it's never going to happen with, with the silly arguments over bending like me. Okay, so here's, panels. here's why I think it makes a difference to those large channels because without conflict, without these debates, not like the fun ones we have, the fun ones that we have, but these true, they, well, hell, for all I know, they're made up of their kayfabe, but um, it could very well be that what they're doing is creating this drama in order to get interest on their channels. How would we make that you do that? Rise above oh, or accept the, the uh, what is it called? Like somebody calls you out, right? Let's say I post something on Twitter and then. Uh, how, would, how would we make, did we make you do this? Did, I, did anybody force you to act like an asshole like this, like in order to mine you for content? I'm just going about my day. And then I see that like there's yet another one of these comic skaters that is trying to poison other comic skate creators into oblivion with this bend the knee, literally poison. Uh, I didn't make you do this. You did this. Crazy. We're, uh, they're only doing this to us for content. Dinner, John, or somebody says that's the gayest thing I've ever heard, and uh, this guy is blah blah blah. I'd be like, "Wow!" Like they just called me out on something. Uh, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like I'd probably find, I'd probably have fun with it. I wouldn't be like going to town, like, "Oh, my heart's broken." Never meet your heroes, kind of a thing. I don't, I don't know. It's, yeah, but you're probably fun with it. Back it up, the CG thing. But did you see that thing on Twitter where that dude went down to Eric Joy's warehouse? Yes. Uh, I think there's a lot of poor people, not poor, not poor in the financial sense, but in the mindset that just take things a little too seriously and they feel like the bend the knee thing if they don't do that then they don't get the respect of the people that they do respect therefore so, if they don't bend that knee and they don't say yeah dude i agree with everything you say on this side and the third then if let's say i don't agree with evs on something right then i'm scared that if i say i don't agree with you on x then he's not gonna let me come on air to his channel and promote my book because he's gonna think i'm an asshole or something i, I just go into the chat and start calling him fat and gay well you know <laughs> I got a lot of respect for all the top tier creators. Well, I got a lot of respect for everybody. It's just the way my mama brought me up. Okay? <laughs> well, I mean, and that's good because these guys actually do deserve some respect yes, considering they, they, their careers, okay. you know, and the fact that we are all brought here. I almost guarantee all of us are here because of like one of those top five guys in there. Well, I'm not going to get into my backstory today. That's a whole nother episode. Don't yeah, well, sure. about that. Yeah. So but the thing is, you oh, know, no. have a respect for somebody and then there's having respect for yourself. There's okay. nobody who would have heard of this Riley guy if not for his now, and I think it's fabricated feud with Jer Eric July. I hope um, it's fabricated because the first time I saw this help. this video of him like pasting uh, money to the door, and I'm like, who the hell is it? What what's his beef? And and this sort of goes back to what Peter said about the details don't come out, and I think that's because the details wouldn't serve the the rage, the um, the yeah, indignant. Like you said though, Joe. Oh, I mean, people do know the details of that story. Yeah, they do. Like, everybody knows it. You know, it's like, well, what happened was uh, he is the producer of Dick and Vito's show. That guy, the guy uh, who is Riley, uh, known as Riley now. And uh, it all started with Vito saying, I don't know. I don't think this comic book is going to be any good that Eric July is doing. Oh, he's connected and, to Vito and Dick? Yeah. He's mm. the show producer for biggest uh, show in the biggest problem in the universe. Oh shit! So uh, it all started there. We all saw where that went. Uh, Dick Masterson got involved, and he was initially supportive of Eric July's comic. Uh, he said it's great marketing, and uh, then he found out that like literally nobody in this community read it. That was so embarrassing. And that's why I've personally been on this mission lately where I'm like, read it, read the comics that you buy, read them. 
Mm -hmm. you, know, you have to read them and post an opinion. It's great that you buy them. We need your support. But if you're buying them and you're just not reading them and, and discussing them, then it doesn't really do anything for our ultimate goal, which isn't just to make paper pamphlets. Yeah, uh, It's to become better storytellers and maybe affect the culture eventually in some way. So let's just say somebody stumbles upon the next um, Walking Dead or the next Something's Killing the Children or wh mm -hmm. whatever it is, the next um, uh, Sweet. What's that book? Sugar Tooth? What's a uh, what is it? sweet tooth? I can't about? imagine somebody getting rock and roll ninja and then just like putting it over to the side and not Wouldn't reading you read it. it? Yeah. Oh like, my god. We dude. have to encourage people. We we have to like make it like like you, you're supposed to read the comics and then and talk I want about to know, them. right? As, as a creator, I, I like I want to know like brutally what you think. Yeah. You know, not none of the like good faith, bad faith. I want to know like good and bad i want to know exactly what you're thinking the raw the better yeah of course yeah so that's what that's ultimately what this is it, if you're going to try to make some kind of cultural change like it's good it's good that i saw made that much money it's not good that nobody seems to have read it and um and people are just mostly saying yeah the quality of the book is really good and it got here on time uh it's what, like are they, that's worried? Not are they worried about it are they worried about like being negative about it or or what i mean do i don't know maybe positive? some people are everybody has their own reasons but i i would just say you know we need to encourage people to actually become like you know literate to the culture and to actually uh to to offer their opinions and mm -hmm. you know it's like you read the book you don't like it that's great you read the book you like it that's great and people should be talking about why yeah um so i mean the the best thing was the barbie movie uh the barbie movie had everybody talking and expressing loud, different opinions. Somebody mm -hmm. made a great video where they uh, did CGI animated models <laughs> of like me and Critical Drinker and like Heel versus Babyface, and then intercut all of our conversation, our debate uh, about the movie into one long one hour video, which made me want to blow my head off of like <laughs> us going back and forth about Barbie. And it was really fun. like it was good. It was it was actually pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. It went on a little bit too long. But, I mean, people need to be talking about what, what it is that they see and uh, what it is that they're giving their money to because it's not just about us making money. It's about uh, us maybe telling stories that are going to matter 20 years from now, you know, to yeah. uh, the next generation of kids. Because the YouTube stuff, you know, we don't know if this will last. You know, we don't know if, if an EMP will hit and just wipe away everything, but those comic books will be there. You know, yeah, of we, course. we want we want those good comics. You know, Pablo Diablo says, I read every comic I buy. Why the hell do you buy a new comic book and not read it? Um, I think a lot of people are buying the books just to be supportive and like, listen, thank you. We appreciate you. But can we get you to read them, too? You know, I mean, that's that's all it is. Uh, Ethan, people aren't reading mainstream comics. They're collecting. Uh, there's some truth to that, too. But the thing is, like the Spider-Man story is already out there. Okay, so whatever they do from here with Spider Man doesn't matter. Yeah. What what I'm doing with Cyberfrog does, Rock and Roll Ninja does, Isom does matter. Like you've got it. People need to know what the stories are. Uh so um <laughs> Barbie. <laughs> yeah, some more Barbie talk. You and Barbie, uh, dude, you were pushing that Barbie movie hard. I don't feel like I was. I think what it was was that. Um, I saw a different movie than everyone else did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I I said, wow, that is like a really powerful series of messages and hidden, wrapped up little uh, subliminal thoughts and jokes and everything. It was a very complicated uh, movie. And initially, mm -hmm. like uh, all of the uh, and I went, wow, that was that was actually really good. It's not for me, but it, it was it was a good movie. And initially, all the reactions from like just these like retarded voices on youtube and I, I excuse me with all due respect fucking retards we're just like that was shit that was anti-male propaganda that was fucking shit and i was just like it was none of those things it was actually a really thoughtful well done movie you're angry because you think you need to be angry or something you you have to actually <sighs> <laughs> I can't stand it. I, I honestly, I can't stand it. It, does, oh, it awesome. makes me really angry because it's like, I, I don't care if you don't like the movie, but 
but tell me why and don't make it because yeah. it's woke. It's like, yeah, it might be, but in what way? And like, oh, fuck, man, you're making videos for lots of people. Hello, Shane. Hey, <clears throat> sorry, I couldn't get in here. Shane. Appreciate you, pal. What's going on? Wow. <clears throat> I've been sick, man. There's like a bug going on pretty bad. You got like the flu or a cold or something? That's something, yeah. <clears throat> Nobody, yeah, I'm getting everybody's over it. sick. The whole, how long did you have it? Uh, like a week. Yeah, this so. thing's like going on forever and getting worse. <laughs> I've still, even... I've still got it. I'm still a little congested. I have to like <clears throat> every now and then to talk. Yeah, but uh, I'm okay. You know. All right, all right. People are telling right. me to shut the fuck up. As long up. as you can still draw, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's what I keep telling you. I'm like, you can still ink. You can still do whatever. Everybody's yeah. happy to see Shane. Shane has a disease. It's yellow fever. <clears throat> Dude, I I throw uh, fifty cc's of Asian on it every day. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, Shane Davis, I'm glad you're here. We're watching a video by Dojo Kun. It was a live stream that happened, I think, yesterday. I've been and listening, so I, I've been I'm you're kind of up to speed. Yeah, I'm up to speed. All right, here we go. Let's get back to these guys. I think it's kayfabe. Yeah. If it is kayfabe, I don't personally think it is. Uh, I just think it's some guy wanting to get some views, and then you know, oh, 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 oh. oh. It maybe it, well, I don't think it's coordinated. At least, if, oh, they're if, talking about that. It's not. It's it's all those things. It, like literally, what happened was it's both serious and it's kayfabe. So the so basically, Dick and Vito brought all this negative attention to Isom and to Eric July, uh, which uh, they're trying to make Eric July into what's called a lol cow map. Yeah, lol cow. Uh, mm -hmm. they, you know, they're not going to be able to do that. He's Eric July. You know, the guy's no. like, not a lol cow. But they're trying to. And so uh, uh, this guy, Riley, made a, something called clip verse He made a parody of rip verse Shane, is somebody making fun of you? Do you have a Nine Lives parody yet or anything not out there? Yet. something mean? Is my mic? Okay, I had it backwards. I'm sorry. Yeah, not not yet. Not yet. <clears throat> I'm One day, I hope. <laughs> one day, I hope. But he's like... Yeah, well, I got a drinking few milk, of, you know, for stronger I'm, bones I'm taking and muscles. My vitamins, and one day, trying yeah, to get one to day that. people will be one obsessed with me to make fun of me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, clip of verse it was called, and the whole idea was I'm going to shave Eric July's shoulders. It's not so bad. It's not the worst thing in the world. No. Um, but it, it it was Eric July's logo, but like changed a little bit. It said clip of verse, and it had a hat, had the yellow hat, and then instead of lightning or something, it had like clippers, like barber clippers on either side connected by wires uh and um that was struck down that was dmc ca struck um by somebody at ripaverse which i condemn guys as big of a supporter as i am of ripaverse uh, i condemn that action that that was not copyright infringement that was parody you can't do that you have to yeah. let people you have to let the little people you know do parodies of you you have to do the little people. You have to let the plebs listen. Uh, that's what that's what happens. You know, it's like when when you become big and popular, somebody is going to be like, uh, I don't think the emperor has any clothes, and they're going to go ahead and they're going to make fun of you. It's what Mad Magazine uh, did. You know, it's a uh, I miss Normal. Mad. <clears throat> Mad would make yeah. fun of their own properties. <laughs> you know, they, like, they didn't care. Like, yeah, they were owned by Warner Brothers. They'd take shots at Warner Brothers shit all the time. Yeah, it's true. Uh, well, and that was the safest thing to do because uh, yeah, you know, it's not like they're going to get sued by the company that owns them. So, uh, but but they did that anyway. Uh, you're allowed to do that, and you shouldn't have done that. Now you've got a guy who at first was just having a little fun on the internet, and now he's like actually kind of legitimately got a gripe, and so he's uh, shows up and uh, he he tried to super chat uh, Eric to say you struck my channel, you struck my uh, my store, whatever it was that he struck. Uh, Eric ignored those apparently, so he showed up and he super chatted. He taped messages to the warehouse door. Uh, I condemn that action. I don't think anybody should yeah. be going to the warehouse uh, and bothering. And uh, no IRL action. Yeah, that's crazy. Obviously, that's terrible, but... Uh, that's insane. Yeah, but I mean, to say this is like completely concocted, you're not following... You, you didn't follow the story. I mean, most people are following the story of what's going on here. Shane, are you following the story? 
Oh, uh, yes, I, I did go back to that six hour live stream. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Holy it's, shit. Uh, holy fuck. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, especially when uh, they start talking about landing planes between Brittany and Venti's eyes, I was like, holy shit, we're off the rails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. It's like, but yeah. All right. Okay. Eric went ahead and f- went along with it in outrage, and then we have this back and forth. I, I maybe, but, uh, on the other hand, I actually don't think that's what's really going on. I think there's some guy that's, what is he, tied to Vito, right? He's tied to Dick and Vito. Somehow. Somehow. I don't even know this guy, like you said, Dojo. And now he's posted so pictures or stickers slide. on on uh, Eric's shed or whatever, his, his storage facility. <laughs> oh, I love it. But, you know, <laughs> it's like maybe Eric overreacted. I don't actually think he did. I mean, I don't think he did. I personally I don't, don't think, think he did. I don't he think he reacted hard enough. Maybe not, yeah. Uh, I am curious why no security guards – Went out there and talked to the guy and told him to leave if it's that big of a deal. Maybe it's something he hadn't considered and didn't, you know, or hadn't uh, informed his security guards to like uh, engage. But he, and now it's Eric, different. Do I have security guards? Well, according to Eric, he, he had he had yeah, security. Oh, but uh, but none of them apparently, from what I have gathered, have appro- approached the guy. It was pretty late at night, so maybe they're kicking back watching security monitors. Who knows? And, <laughs> and that's the problem. Nobody knows. It's really nobody's business. They're not the fact that it ended up all over the place is interesting and maybe leads to the, the kayfabe thing, you know, like let's get some internet drama and monetize our haters. Right. That's the, that's his, his motto or his saying at least. Yeah. Right. And I agree with that actually. So if they, if it is everybody, if it is both those guys just basically beefing up their numbers, well, kudos to both of them. Actually, that's pretty good. <laughs> Jake, let's, let's uh, turn this table over to you now. You, are- I, I promise you Eric July is not doing this like to beef up his numbers. He doesn't Eric need is- it. Yeah, he doesn't need it. He's literally like legitimately pissed about this. He's not like, I have an idea. You know how he's beefing up his numbers by being like, hey, I have Mike Barron. Hey, I have Chuck yeah. Dixon. You know, he's like doing legit. That's how I beefed up my numbers. I was yeah, like, I got was, uh, Mike Barron on my show. Um, it was legitimate beefing, not like, hey, let's make up some weird, goofy shit. Like, it just doesn't seem like it's in uh, Eric's wheelhouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alfred Ortiz says the next 100k of ISOM sales will go towards a moat. Sentry <laughs> guns with fucking paintball. Pow, 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 yeah. pow. I mean, you know, yeah. Can you can you expect people not to show up if they find your place of business? Like, uh, what do you do? Like, if somebody really hated me and wanted to come find my warehouse, I guess they could. I'm, I'm hardly ever there. I'm there like three hours a day, but I guess they could. What do I do? Do I hire armed security? Do warehouses have armed security? I mean, a fucking you, warehouse. If you want to pay for it, you can get it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you want to pay for an armed security guard, usually if they're carrying a, a gun and they have a permit, they charge a lot more. But yeah, yeah but what am do I doing? It. Flying yayo out from uh, New Jersey <laughs> to Bolivia? Like, oh, I'm just <laughs> packing toys. Why do I need armed security? You're a VIP. Yeah, you are. You're a VIP. You that should have true. just somebody walking with you who has uh, you need multiple entourage. licenses. Yeah, you, you need an entourage wherever you go. Yep. Like you need to be walking. You know, and John on one side, Cecil on the other. You know. Yeah. You need seals in the bushes. Hmm. Seals in the bushes. Seal mm-hmm. Team Six. Yep. Somebody comes up. They try to tape money to my door. You know. Liquefied. It's a lot of that going on. I'm telling you. I don't know what's going on, but there's a lot of craziness in the world right now. Did you guys see that video of the... Um, I th- uh, is it my wrong? I think I'd be okay if people were taping money to my door. Is it me? I mean, I'm not... <laughs> I don't I don't know if I'm against that. What if they know? were taping money to your door and it was like, uh, hey, Shane... I'm going to come and shave your head. And here's $50. That's and it was like a message right. attached to it. That's I'm going to shave. I your don't head. know about Shane, but like he has a small child. I have a small child. If yeah. somebody came and uh, taped twenties and fifties to my garage door, I'm thinking uh, chocolate chip uh, paint, like waffles. I'm thinking yogurts, you know, the little yeah. yogurt pouches. I'm yeah. thinking all that Capri stuff. Suns. Right. Capri uh, Sun. Uh, uh, Paw Patrol, right? You know, right. like 
those are my real stresses. <laughs> like that's reality for me is like, do I have enough snacks in the cupboard for my two children who just, they, they're just holes. They just eat everything. So yeah, that's what I would be like. Holy shit. 20 bucks. That's like Capri's. That's some Capri fucking, Suns. That's some, yeah. That's some like Paw Patrol, uh, ginger snap cookies or something. You know, there's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, gummies, you know, the little, uh, gummies, uh you know, really? fruit things. You know, fruit, fruit, fruit snacks. You have fruit snacks. Um, it wasn't his residence either. It was like a business. It's it's like I I don't know. I don't think you can kind of keep. It's not like Marvel headquarters can keep me from, you know, running up to their office and taping money to their door. You know, it's like <laughs> I, I'm just saying. Like it, it's like any business. You know, it's like unless it's I don't know. This whole thing is blown out of proportion. In my he does have opinion. his name on the glass of the location that he was at. You know, yeah. so there is a little bit of a, a public found kind of... it right. Like there it is. Yeah. Like I'm looking for McDonald's. There's a building there. How do I know it's a McDonald's though? Yeah. Oh, cause it says McDonald's on the window real big. Like now I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go in and get myself a delicious cheeseburger. So now Eric yeah. needs to go in and like scrape his name off the glass and maybe put like some like, uh, plywood over it so it looks like it's all derelict and shit you know well, so like, it's, I do. like when i lived upstate when halloween me and my girlfriend wanted to go to the amityville horror the the house right the real house mm -hmm. owned by private people okay i'm not stepping up on it but nobody could stop me from going to it it's a public the devil street. could the devil could yeah but he didn't because <laughs> i went and i took pictures mm-hmm you went and you took pictures? They, I just they... wanted to be there. I don't know. It's Is like, there any like, like creepy movie. pigs in the in the windows? No, they, they, it was the Halloween pictures? and the people there were having a Halloween party and I debated oh, crashing it. Like I was like, maybe I could just go in and say I know Bob. Hmm. You know, Bob's a great guy. That always works. Uh well, the world is crazy now, but you have to take things seriously. Yeah, you do. Do you see that that Antifa couple getting stabbed to death by the uh the black gentleman of color? Uh, that was something else. Dude, I saw that. I watched the whole video. I saw the uncut version. Uh, oh, and with the unblurred? Unblurred. Uh, and by the way, it's not like there was blood or anything. Yeah. You, you wouldn't even know what really happened unless you knew what happened. But yeah, yeah like a uh, nice little, nice little what? couple of Antifa kids who uh, basically uh, taunt conservatives on the internet. Both of them. This, uh, this nice couple mentally ill girlfriend and a soy boy and um they're out uh, at some wedding or some party and after that's over with they're sitting on the park bench i didn't realize this but i did see that dick masterson pointed out that the park bench had handles on it did you see this they like keep metal homeless people yeah it's to keep homeless people from sleeping on it and that is what killed him okay because in, in a way it, it fucked him up didn't help it, it didn't help. Well, the dude that was chasing him with, I guess, a knife. I don't know. Was it a box cutter or a knife? I have no idea. But the dude that was chasing him was behind him. He trips over the rails of that bench. If those uh, rails weren't there, he would have probably jumped that bench. But he caught his foot on the, the rail. To keep he wasn't going to jump off. that. He was panicking. And he no, was, but he, he, he would have made he it. He forgot it was it. there. He would have no, made he it forgot past. it was there. If that was a normal bench, I think he would have um because the bench was lined up between the guys. Here's what I legs. think happened. I don't know. I missing. feel like I feel like the bench is there, the railing is there. The guy's already shown what kind of like uh interaction he's ready to give, and it's it's none. Well, Shane, any, like anyway, this guy doesn't want to fight at all. No, so I know like, that. He, I know that if but he anyways, tripped over that 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 seat, like he would have like ended up against the wall and stabbed. Like I feel like it was inevitable. Well, anyways, dude, I, fucking... I, got, I got you, but he was ahead of the guy with the knife, and then after tripping, the guy was in front of him and had to turn back. Yeah, but around. I think you missed something. I don't know if you realize this or anybody has because nobody's there's no autopsy. Nobody's talking about what happened, but the guy went like this to him, and he went like this. He hit uh, him in the neck uh, with a knife. He cut his throat. Uh, and the guy panicked and was reacting like a chicken who had just gotten a, a head wound. He didn't know where he was going. He was already disoriented, uh, and he tripped over the bench. Uh, and then just up, oh you know? wait, his neck was slit before you. I think it? so. Go oh, back and watch Jesus. that video. You just see the guy hit him like this, 
and he hit him in a way that it wasn't a punch. It was like a backhanded thing like this, and he like got him in the neck. Uh, uh, and I think he got him in the neck with, uh, with his knife. So but New York you can't is fucked see, up, man. Dude, I'm telling you, man, it's absolutely insane. But you know what? Like most normal people know it's fucked up. Uh, and they haven't let social justice delude them into thinking that they're so powerful. They're like white saviors uh, who, if they're just like, I'm on your side. Hey, I'm an ally. I'm an ally. Stop stabbing me. Ah! I voted for Obama. Ah! Something in the and by the way, nice is... girlfriend who just sat there and fucking watched it. As Didn't though use he... your purse. You could have started swinging on the guy with the purse. Could have done something. Oh, you can't know. swing a purse at a black guy. What are you doing? <laughs> Why? Uh, he's saying, I, I'm wrong. No, he was stabbed three more times. Somebody he said stabbed. he was pierced in the heart. Is, yeah, he, mean, was. he was. Oh, my God. Like, you see him fall down, and the guy just gets on him. One, two, three, like this. And then he's walking away, and the girlfriend's like, hey. And then she, and and then she didn't want to, like, say, she didn't want to describe who he was, the attacker was, because she didn't oh, want to spread stereotypes. Worst. Liberals are the fucking worst. And Antifa I, is the worst of the worst. So the guy comes back and, like, it, like he, he spits in her face and then he gives the her dying boyfriend a nice good kick in the ribs. Uh, You know, it, it's fucking disgraceful. I disavow wooden shot. He and she just goes, go after, watch him. She says to, like, some girl who comes out. It's like, like, she see, and when she said watch him, she huh. seemed like, watch him. He's really upset. He just fucking... Now, was everybody high? Was everybody drunk? I mean, I, I don't understand. I watched that video. I got this. Is, these are inhuman reactions to what's going on. All of it. Like, none of it makes sense. Normal people, at no point is anyone acting like a person at all in this video. Nobody on the yeah. screen. Uh, so uh, it's bizarre. It's the world of leftism. It is the world that Alfred Ortiz, of course, in our chat, promotes, is hoping for, fighting for, fighting for that. Uh, and uh, it was uh, very Jeez, sad. Up, I disavow wooden shot. He says uh, it made the girlfriend wet. That's why she didn't react. What oh, the you think fuck? she banged him after that? That's fucked up, man. That is shame. God damn, man. I didn't say that God wooden damn. shot did. You need to. <laughs> I, I hear you, dude. <laughs> Throw a wrench at it. <laughs> humiliating. What a humiliating death. Uh, so, uh, Alvin Ortiz goes, yeah, only New Jersey, though. I lived New in New York City for a while, dude. And like you just don't fuck with somebody who's like was acting Brooklyn. weird. You moved yeah. away, you know. You get a you get the fuck away. Like you, I've seen enough like trails of blood. You know what I mean? Going to going to class at SVA to be like, yeah, you don't don't fuck with people who are homeless. Bellevue. Oh wait a second. No, Alfred didn't mean that. Alfred said, yeah, only in Jersey though. No, he wants me to get stabbed uh, by a crazed uh, person of color. F you, <laughs> Alfred. That's a you terrible do, yeah. thing to say. Are you uh, armed? We, you should be armed. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh no, it is like that. What I have is, yeah, it's uh, I, I, you have no now, idea, dude. Was I, I, I watch videos like that, and I, like everybody does, right? There's no guy who doesn't go. Please let me be appropriately prepared and be in that situation. I would love that. Like this is the kind of fantasy that men have. Like men dream of like like uh, being on a plane at, with like terrorists and you just happen to have gotten a gun on board or something. You know what I mean? It's like, God, that'd be so amazing. I would love that. Uh, yeah. DJ Fox says, uh, EVS always speaks highly of Anna and co. Uh, why not call him out? Like you do others, Matt. Did they take your place in some imaginary line? Wait a minute. What the um, fuck? Made... Hold on. I, I'm on like my third margarita, my fur, my third pina colada. What the fuck nope. is this dude saying? He's saying uh, that, like, you have a problem with Anna and Co. Uh, why do you not call him out like you do others, Matt? Did they take your place in the imaginary line some of you made? So he's calling you out as a hypocrite. For what? For Anna and company? Yes. And I condemn well, your comments about Anna. Anna is really nice. I don't understand why. I know you... she is. She is actually nice. And, you know, it's like I made, like, a, a throwaway joke that was, like, three levels lower than anything that sit on the Jack show. And it kind of got blown out of proportion. So it's, it's, I have nothing against Anna. Uh, it's just, it's just my, my, it's just me. I have no chill. So when, when Cecil like came at me, which he rightfully did because they're best friends, 
I fucking started beefing with him. I mean, it's, I really, I don't want to call it kayfabe, but it's, it's very like Grand Theft Auto. Like if any of them like DM me, I would not have a problem with them in real life. Like I really have no right. problem with these people. Thank you for bending the knee. Uh, and now yeah! let's, get <laughs> let's get back. I don't, to the they're not bad. You know what I mean? Like one of the first things I, like I came to CG was like, and it's cool. And you know what? Fuck war campaign because they went after her, her sister. So like, I was like, yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah, you know, kind of, and it was like you're... always kind of like, yeah, don't fuck with her. So yeah, but really Cody S is right. Like, Anna is kind of mean as fuck. Yeah, that's true though. You say, oh, Anna's like really innocent, but no, Anna's mean too. Anna calls Cecil uh, the F A G G O T word uh, <gasps> many times, uh, most almost every day. So uh, you know, finally, yeah, she's, she's yeah, but be... that's like saying water's wet. We all know that. I know. Yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? Are on Don's side of this argument. What do you think? Uh, no, sure I don't think you Stay need sure. to bend the knee to be CG. Uh, like I've said many times, like CG has broken into different factions. So it's it's a wide umbrella cast over a bunch of different. Uh, I don't know this guy. Ideologies and, you know, individuals that have one common goal, which is to create comics the way you want to without being held back from any kind of uh, political nonsense that could take place. But I mean, no, I think. I think, like Peter said, if you're respectable to your peers and everything, you should be fine. But bending the knee to just exactly how somebody stands just so you can get a little clout for yourself, I think you you can do that if you want, but you're not technically CG. You're just trying to get that clout so you can start moving up the ladder, personally, is yeah. my take. I mean, you can you can make your own way and still call yourself CG because you still believe, have the same this ideals. This is such a weird conversation. Does, so I don't. I don't yeah. see why I need to bend the knee. I think you're just getting raw dog at that point. That's a okay. good point. Um, Pause so, this for a second. You know, okay. Like, oh, th this to me is like, at first I, I don't, I guess the bend the knee thing is like, I, they don't really explain that, but like your somebody's ass isn't getting kissed enough, I guess, is what, basically what they're saying, right? What, what would bend the knee mean? Like, what does that mean? Well, I mean, it's a Game of Thrones type reference, right? So you'd have to like bend the knee and be like, "My lord, to the king." Yeah, yeah, it's a hierarchy mm. thing. I get that, but I mean, no. I mean, so is there a question that somebody somewhere isn't that? that I mean, I, I don't understand how this is being brought up here. I mean, has this got mm. some type of conflict with? I, I'm assuming you, because they're yeah. not saying names. So like. Yeah, it, it's just big, nobody's really I painting guess. a reference point here. It's well, let me like, explain. Would you like to know? Yeah. So what happened was uh, I heard somebody sent me a clipping of people in a back room, Patrick Thomas Parnell and Dojo Kuhn and a bunch of other of these guys, not these guys, some other people that I don't remember. Uh, but uh, one of them was, and the topic of discussion uh, was something along the lines of, when you're in CG, it just seems like nobody has your back. Nobody has your, you should have, people should have your back for being in CG. Uh, and uh, they were all agreeing and talking about how they, nobody had their backs, et cetera, et cetera, which I don't know what that means exactly. But what I yeah. did was I went on Twitter, uh, actually one of my agents, you know, all caps comics uh, yeah. went on Twitter. You have a crew. Mm -hmm. My crew. Uh, and they Beatles. tweeted out, apropos of nothing, they tweeted out, the great thing about being in Comic Skate is that everybody has your back. And it's really important that people have your back in Comic Skate, right? I was baiting this guy and he went right for it. Why do you say that? Why are you saying that? What made you say that? Hmm. And I was like, he said, I, I want to know what why you, you said that. And I said, I'll bet you do. No, the, my all caps comics person did. And uh, <laughs> he said, well... Uh, can you tell the class why you tweeted that? Now, I want you to really think about mm. how this looks to outsiders. Like, to outsiders, I just said everybody should have everybody's back. And this guy goes, why would you even say that? Which is weird, because that's a normal thing that you should say. It's it's fine. And then I go, I'll bet you do. And he goes, you want to tell the class? And I go, it's none of your business. And he goes, fuck you. That's mm. really weird, right? Like, if you saw that as an outsider, that would be really, really weird. But now that you know that these guys were saying weird shit in private about this, and then I right. said that, no, that's so uh, now this guy blocks 
all caps comics, the all caps comics account, even though he's been on my show a bunch of times, really weird behavior. A lot. Uh, and then there's this, then there's this live stream about how you need to bend the knee, uh, which is uh, Smillerisms. I don't know where this is coming from. I have a feeling there's a little crew of yeah. disgruntled folks uh, who are all doing this same kind of thing that they always do. Uh, so I thought I'd shed a little light on it. All right. Yeah, I. It, it's like a. It's funny. I had a conversation with someone. The I guess it was last week, and a similar remark kind of came up. And it's like, oh, we're all in this together. I'm tired of the mean girl shit. And it's like, okay, yeah, we are all. Good luck. We're all, we are all in this together. I guess, you know, like that. And uh, I, and I, well, why it struck me odd is like, you know, like I I've had this person on the promote. And, um, uh, you know, like at the same time, this person's been here for years, they haven't built a channel that could promote me ever. And the concept of we're all in this together, but you're not building a platform is a very one sided situation. Um, yeah. Mm. And, and, it, and when I first came here and I'm going to bring John into this, John gave me shit right away he was like uh you need to get out there and get a thousand subs and i'm like wow i got shit to draw dude why do i need to why do i need to get out there and get a thousand subs he's like well and this was all publicly on the stream maybe it was Corey barton or some it was on some stream and he's dressing me down in public about this he's like well you get out there you get a thousand subs that's a thousand potential customers he takes this dot uh, uh you know a notch higher he goes and then on top of that, you know, um, you come on my stream to promote, then you've built a platform where I can come on and promote, and that way you're giving back. Mm. And he just did all this publicly, and I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm going to... That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. It, but this is like something that's so lost in the community. I talked about it, I think, on Pimp My Comics last week a little bit with Mandy and Dale, but it, it's like... It, I, I view this as like take a penny, leave a penny type situation. And I feel like a lot of people are, are just expecting pennies. You know, they're they're just. Well, that's exactly what they're going to get with this shit. And they should be aware of that. I mean, this network and it, I, I mean, CG can be like SJW, say I'm CG. CG could be like it's about making independent comics. Like you can you can angle CG. It's got a lot of utility into different categories or different things that service you at any point in time but uh it, it, you know i refer to it as it's a network and you know um <laughs> to get off the damn niche well that's what he's mm -hmm. saying he's saying yeah like you don't like don't be on your knee like you know if there is such a thing as like bending the knee i, I mean here's the thing like beggars do have to bend the knee they have to right uh, yeah. I don't want beggars around here. Like uh, that's that's the whole thing. Like nobody wants to carry you. Nobody wants you on their back. Like people, you know, out of the goodness of our hearts, like occasionally we're going to bring people on and we'll promote some books if they look really, really good and stuff like that. But like really, the point of this is supposed to be what John Mellon says: grab an oar. And which yeah, you know, no, like a cliche. People forgot yeah. what it meant. You know. I mean, it. I mean, I value that a lot. You know, I try to grow my channel. I try to do what I can. I have people on. But every year I run a campaign um, or multiples in the case of this year, every time I go, well, it's time for me to try to make the rounds, there aren't more channels for me to go on. Like the, the group is not growing channels. I just got monetized, dog. Okay. You, ju you just ah. got monetized? Yeah. It's great. Um, because a couple of months ago, not to cut you off, Shane, yeah. Hale, I love you, sir. But like a couple of months ago, I was like, hey, Patrick, like we're doing this. We're talking comics. Like, can we do it on my channel, too? Because I could grow. And he was like, nah, I just want to do it on mine. And I was like, OK. And I think that was like like the last like no I heard. And I just started working on my channel and just like blocked out what I wanted to do and when I wanted to do it. And then just really focused on on building on building my platform, you know. I, I and know uh, if, uh, I got I, I got monetized uh, like two weeks ago. Is John That's Stone true. Cold? Is he Stone Cold? Do you think so? I think he's warm and soft. 
Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. I think he would be like uh, happy with that description of himself. Hmm. Stone Cold Psychopath. <laughs> kind of wonder if he wrote that. Yeah, it probably is him in the chat. It's probably like a, a fake account there. Uh, Yellow Flash says Shane is going to bail and go live in Tim Pool's mansion. Go live in Tim Pool's mansion. So long, CG. That's Shane Davis. So that's Yellow yeah, Flash's that's opinion. Me. Yeah, yellow. You don't want to live in his mansion. You've been there. I've Sorry. been there. It's not. <laughs> I, I Does he not. really have a mansion? Is it really no, a, a mansion that you're no, streaming? No, out no, of? no, no, no. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's uh well, Yeah, I'm, I'm. 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 I got bags packed, guys. I'm out the door. <laughs> Get them bags. Shane's gonna leave us for back. Mary Morgan. Yeah, Shane. Well, you wouldn't be leaving us. You would be leaving uh, Yanzi and Pterodactyl. Yeah. You know? All right, here we go. If you ask 100 different people who claim to be CG what the definition of CG is, you might get 100 different answers. This is like the same thing. We're, who was writing these talking points down and handing them out to these tards? Who was doing this? It's all like queued up in the back room. I mean, and that's who the is other it? thing too. Is it Mike? Like, eh, look, who wrote all this shit? Because Mike, Mike S. Miller used to say this stuff too. But where did he get it from? Is it Doug Tenable? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, where? what is the source of this? If you ask a uh, hundred different people what they think CG is, they're going to give you different answers. So what? So what? Jesus Christ. So fucking oh, stupid. Yeah, 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 because I think we all have, too. Yes, we all have our own ideas. It's a loosely associated group. There's no membership card. There's no handshake. There's no leader. I know there's some people who are considered top echelon, whatever. They've got 30 years experience in the industry. That doesn't make them better people necessarily. I have 30 right. years in my industry. Um, I'm well respected in what I do. That doesn't make me popular in CG necessarily. Well, but, we um, don't, you know, you know so uh, these I, fucking I credits don't transfer, now. bitch. As, as yeah. somebody who isn't currently gay comic, porn fluffers don't really don't really translate yeah. over here. Uh, I'm gonna sorry. I'm an adjuster. So fucking what, dude? I'm a creator. <laughs> You're a fan of this whole group of CG. You be, you believe in our ideology for the most part. I'm sure you too would have a different definition. What do you think about this notion that if you don't fall in line, kiss the ring, whatever you want to call it, that you actually can't consider yourself CG? What do you think? Well, personally, I think, I think that, course, that's not true, but I'm on the side that says, yes, you have to bend the knee. So Fanta. I guess uh, we'll just take it from, from my, my where I stand. I got into this through Tug, as I've said before. I followed him into all these different channels and became a fan and, and everybody was so accepting. And I started doing my little promo videos. Well, this is the new name of uh comic skate Kings, by the way, top echelon mm. from here on out. People got really poopy pants with that name Kings. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know what it was, yeah. was it was just uh free and United comic skate Kings on Monday. So, uh, it was just called Fuck Mondays. That's that. That was the whole idea of the show. Comic Skate Kings, Free United Comic Skate Kings, F U C K Mondays, Fuck Mondays. Did you tell Aaron that? Lepresti? I don't think. Yeah, I, I had to. <laughs> it, it used to be that, and then I was like, I got to change it because I got all these guys who are not going to be on the show with that title. So yeah. now it's just Comic Skate Kings, which which works just fine. Uh, poopy right pants. Back. This is not why I did it, but I'm using this as an example, just saying that. Okay. My channel started to grow. And I started getting recognized by more people. And so if I want to remain, I've been called CG because I do this for people. Um, if I want to remain at the level I am and to build up, I'm going to have to keep on that same, you know, going with the big dogs with the, you know, you don't put your campaign on this platform or that platform because we're not going to promote you and we're not going to, you know, like that. So I think John. you have to a little, what? <laughs> hey, I said, I don't want to do that. We, also, we got Billy though. <laughs> you know, well, it, I, I'm just saying that, you know, so if you, in some people's mind, you may have to bend the knee and follow along what they say, because they do have the bigger channels. They do have more, you know, viewers when they're live, they have more, you know, whatever, but to keep that status and to keep growing, some people may think, yep, we've got to bend the knee. Even though we don't believe this, we're going to have to go along with it if we want to prosper ourselves. That is so sad. Yeah, it, it's often been said that none of the guys, none of us, I was going to say none of the guys in the top echelon, but really none of us who have a channel are beholden to anybody else. If somebody mm -hmm. were to contact me to ask to be on our show, 
and I don't want them on the show, I don't have to agree to have them on the show. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. And the same is true for any of the names that you guys have been saying all along. That's that's right. If I'll, I'll just use it. If John doesn't want you on his channel, he doesn't have to at all. Right. Even if he even if he does nope. agree with you, um, even if you do fall in line and bend the knee, it's totally up to him. So they keep saying stuff like this, but then what is the bend the knee thing? <laughs> like they always say like the same talking points. Like they like we acknowledge and our voices go up when we say. When John doesn't want to have you on the channel, he doesn't have to have you on the channel. That means like uh, we don't really believe that. We're angry about it. We're just saying it. What is like uh, then? What is the bend the knee thing? I don't. I, I really don't understand these people. So, so yeah, Peter's point about respecting those guys, regardless if you agree with them or not, is a good one. However, on the other side, let's talk about some people who claim to be CG really don't participate much there's a few people who show up in these chats or sorry show up on these shows just long enough to promote a group uh, a book so like mm -hmm. there have been a few that have shown up i've never heard of them before the book looks awesome to be honest with you but they come in they want me to back their book and i never see them again it's like what so are you just claiming to be cg just for the bucks and, and maybe the answer is, is yes but then i would say that those people are not bending the knee are some of them funded? Yeah, I guess some of them are. They're also not CG. <laughs> Irene Strakowski. Yeah, they're, they're calling out Irene. What do you think of that? Yeah, where's Irene now that her yeah. book is funded? Right. Oh, wait a wait a second. She does have she has a book right now, doesn't she? That is the type of CG person to kind of like show up when their book needs funding, and then as soon as it gets funded, they they like evaporate. They bail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that would be Doug to April too, you know, but he bailed permanently. Yeah. Mm. They're not CG, so uh, I guess if they're not bending the knee, they wouldn't be considered well, CG. Now, let's let's talk about that a minute. If if they believe that independent comics should be without censorship, should be without agenda, and they show that in what they create, could they not claim to be CG? Just because they're not in our chats. Well, how haven't we? Haven't like hasn't Comicsgate? Uh, I guess you could say exiled CG was certain a group. creators. <laughs> yeah, like CG the group. So he exiled some creators for that exact reason. They're not there promoting their book. Maybe it looks good. Maybe it looks bad. They're not. They're not. Uh, they, they start to kind of lash out at some of these. The like, you would call them leaders, but I honestly don't think that the leaders. They're just the biggest names. Okay. It, the you the biggest channels, the biggest audiences. I know. Biggest I know. The biggest numbers in indie comics. You've got they people that come in the, and they the get on their channel because their comic book looks good. But like you said, you don't see them again because they weren't here for any other reason to, to sell lie, their comic book. Lie. And I guess if they got some people and nobody sells them out <laughs> fast enough, they're good for good on them. But Liar. they're not CG. Liar. Well, here's Can I play for a minute? Yeah, go ahead, Dan. All right. I know that if what I'm about to say is gonna be very <clears throat> incendiary. But uh -oh. I kind uh -oh. of feel like you're not tried in true CG unless you wear that scarlet letter and you wear it with pride. You got you to take some hits, man. Most of how, you, how do you mean wear it? You, you got to say it. You got to announce it. You got to hashtag the hell out of it. You, uh, we've all caught crap for it, all right? If, I mean, the bigger guys, they got burned. Their entire lives got derailed. Uh, there are people still trying to literally destroy them. And a lot of the smaller guys, we, we thought some of that heat too, right? Yep. So, and we oh, still... Yeah. We still stay true to those two letters, that CG. I don't think that's been to the knee, and I don't think that's kissing the ring. That is also staying true to who you are. But at the same time, if some schmuck down the road with like 70 followers comes in off of Twitter and goes, Hey, everybody, I want to get on your show and I want to promote my new comic. I'm oh my God. What if John is doing one of his uh, documentaries right now? What if that's one of the reasons why John hasn't been here for like two weeks? I mean, I know it isn't, but what if it was? What if he was hmm. actually making a new video? Um, good, I, would, I guess. Yeah, no, yeah. it'd be awesome. It'd be That'd awesome. That'd be interesting. I don't. Oh think shit! That what if he's doing one on the dungeon? Uh, oh god! I didn't. I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to go there. Do you think he's doing it? No comment. He's doing it, Shane. You know it. No, Shane, I don't. You know. have I knowledge know. of John Mayer no, doing a dungeon video. I, I didn't say that at <laughs> all. At all. I Never did I dungeon. say that. Never. Dungeoneers. I, <laughs> I said he was going to. He did say that. Oh, it's <laughs> funny. I would love that. I don't know why he wouldn't do it. Laziness. We got to uh, get his channel struck so he can, uh, you know, just spend more time making videos. 
Uh, that would be very boring because nothing happened at the castle. Well, I mean, it, but something did happen at the castle. There was a weird fra like fractioning that happened, right? Mm, I don't, I don't even know. Wasn't there something was. like everybody that was there was like looking at them weird, and they were there looking at everybody there weird. Well, there was a dude, and Eric Huffles told me this, and there was a dude getting jerked off in the corner by his girlfriend. So, Eric, something did happen there. You told me that the day after at the con. So, and that would cause weird looks if some people are jerking off in the corner and other people are just standing yeah. around talking about comics. That would cause weird looks. Yeah. If, if Comic Skate is in a, a public uh, facility, or a, a room, a club of some kind, <laughs> Where a dude is walking around with his dick <laughs> and his ass out, uh, and uh, women are getting spanked uh, by people in leather gimp suits, uh, and then there's somebody, there's a dude jerking off in the corner. That's something happening. That is, that's was that Vaughn that was getting jerked off in the corner? No, or? and he wasn't jerking off. I was told maybe it wasn't you, Eric. Maybe it was somebody else that went told me that. But I was told his girlfriend was jerking him off, and he had a black condom on. I, somebody told me details. I'd be fucking pissed. Like I, if I'm going, if I'm going to spend all this money, and I'm going to travel, and I'm going to meet these people who I've been hanging out with online. Like I want to, I want to spend time and talk to them. I don't want to like have to get like spanked. yell in their ears while there's like people jerking off around us. You know. Yeah. Mm. I think what John's problem is that you know there's a there's a sense that John has that like Patrick Thomas Parnell and a few others like within Comicsgate really want to turn Comicsgate into more of a social club, so that you know they're they're engineering meetups uh, where comic skate gets together and um you know uh patrick and uh, co organize these and then maybe they're going to these types of places i think that's what john thinks maybe like they're doing a convention they're making good money uh, but then after hours you know they're going to uh clubs with necrophiliacs and stuff you know i would need to see more than Fucking one animals. con leading to a snm place to like see a pattern like well i'm not maybe in tampa they went somewhere but like if you went to some other city and you were like yo let's go to the closest snm place like then yeah. maybe i would be like yo there's a pattern here but there would have to be more than one like two in a two in a row yeah two in a row where you know uh you go to a like a swingers club uh with uh with these guys well yeah, like, then you'd be like wait a second no you thank know, you yeah. Well, and I'm not speaking for John, but there's a little bit of hypocrisy there. You know, everybody takes, you know, digs at John, no eyebrows, fake wife, all of that, lives in his dungeon, never leaves his house. He's got slaves in a pit, all this stuff. Everybody can make fun what? of that all day long. But somebody makes a joke about sex dungeon and a bunch of CGers that ended up in a you know a sex uh, uh, yeah a sex club <laughs> and all of sex no but i mean you go make a joke then people get their noses been out of shape and then yep. they're like how dare you and it's like there's the hypocrisy that's the problem it's okay when you're tossing jokes back at john but when john tosses one back then then it's like oh foul 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 you know that's little that's something yeah uh, I'm going to stick up for Kelsey here in this scenario. Uh, Kelsey lives like, uh, in a strange cabin on the bayou. Uh, yeah, and like gators around his house and shit. He finally got to go someplace with actual people, people he knows who are friends. And, uh, they took him to a uh, pervert club. Yeah. <laughs> Supposedly he didn't go. Uh, oh. he 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 stayed back at his room and talked about comics. Wouldn't it be oh. cool though, real quick, if Kelsey had like one of those boats with the fan on it? Like, yeah, I mean, like that's yeah. the Kelsey mobile. You know, it's like it would be cool. I would like that. I I see Kelsey mm -hmm. as um uh, <laughs> not swamp ape, skunk ape. Like yeah. uh, skunk ape. People talk about Bigfoot all the time and Sasquatch, but Bigfoot is gay compared to skunk ape. Uh, yeah. Like the name Skunk Ape is awesome. Uh, yeah, that's I, some he, like uh, southeastern stuff, right? Like, yeah. yeah. 
It's, I mean, that down in Florida, you don't have Bigfoot. You have look at Skunk Ape just sitting there copping a squat here. Yeah, it looks like he's <laughs> taking his shit in your driveway. <laughs> exactly, he's <laughs> taking his shit. He's got a fucking squatty potty. He's just fucking rocking that shit in search of Florida's skunk uh, skunk ape. There he is. He's running away. It's Who, beautiful. Kelsey? Man. Is that Kelsey? <laughs> yeah. It kind of looks like Kelsey. Like, like you can't tell me that. Picture some fucking hobo in a field taking his shit. Like look at this. I like the one. I like the picture right there with the red eyes. Like oh yeah, yeah yeah. <laughs> That's very convincing. There. That's a good picture of skunk ape of him behind a potted plant. Because that's yeah. that's a potted plant. <laughs> <laughs> Man, totally have skunk good. apes fighting all those anacondas and pythons that are loose in Florida right now. That could be a. I fucking miss CG Swamp comedy. Thing. I I don't know, man. I I miss Swamp Thing. I, I want I want that. Like just him wading in the water, fighting yes. a giant snake, a, a half naked girl. Needing yes. Help. Swamp Thing was dope. I fucking man, good. give me man thing if I can't get a good swamp thing. Just give me a, well, <laughs> if you want man swamp. thing, they'll uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'll take you to that club. Oh, sweet Jesus, give me man thing. Uh, let's see, is it it is a gay sex dungeon dance club, says Hiroshima Otaru. So he's already made up his mind about it. Mm. I don't know, like, I haven't made up my mind about it. I'm not sure, I'm just amused by John. Uh, John's moral take about this is extremely moral take. Uh, and again, I have not seen Kelsey since. Some people say Kelsey's just going to like uh, kind of rest for a little while. He'll come back. I don't know if he will or not. I don't know where Kelsey went. Uh, Shane, you're a voice of reason. Can you get Kelsey to come back? Uh, you know, like I heard from Kelsey a couple of weeks ago and he was like, yeah, yeah. And I got a bunch of pages coming your way. And then I'm like, cool. Where's the pages? I haven't heard from him in weeks. So I don't know. I hope to hear from Kelsey again. <laughs> yeah. I hope. I hope. All right. Let's talk about bending the knee. I only Come worry up. about girls on their knees. Come on. <laughs> I'll buy for a minute. I think you're in it because you see our success and you're trying to grift off of that. And I ain't about it. I didn't now, join somebody... CG. I didn't join CG for the money. I didn't do it for the success. And I didn't do it for any other reason. I, I've been CG. Uh, very loud and proud for almost two years now. Okay, I've had the likes of Mark Brooks come after me, that and I've had mags and all. You guys know the story, I guess, right? Yep. So I've waited a long time, and I'm just now getting the book out. You know, I'm not, I, my belief system got rattled, and I started to see things differently, and that's why I'm CG. Now I can't speak for everybody else, but I have, have only been here a short time. All right, two years is a short time. A lot of these guys have been here for a lot longer, and I've seen a lot of upstarts and just coming in off the street man and saying yeah we're this that and the third and but this is my book it's all about their book 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 nobody wants to i don't know man um like you said though you take partake you know join the chats um just back other people's book a retweet or something like that you, i don't see a lot of that and it's, so does it's this mean enough. that backing these comic books isn't just the quality of the book that matters but the popularity of the person making it I don't think it's popularity. No, I think it's a lot of its quality. A lot of its heart, though. You know, you gotta have that. I, I want you to know, Dojo Kun, that Projectile Reptile is the worst titled book I've ever heard in my entire life. I mean, and I, we're talking about like uh, there have been a lot of contenders for that. But Starlight for, Cats was a good contender for that Starlight name. Cats was great. <laughs> it was a good. It was a good name. I mean, the name was. I was like, I I hated that name for like six years, and then I just never could come up with a better name. I was like, fuck it, it's Starlight Cats. <laughs> uh, projectile Reptile. If I had to be honest, sounds like a reptile vomiting. It just it does. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, well, I, I mean, it couldn't be more vague if you tried. It, it'd be like uh, you know. Uh, missile firing mammal you know it's like uh well <clears throat> you want to be a little more specific with that is it a whale with the uh you know shotgun or like what like what the fuck and i'm not taking shots and if somebody thinks that was a shot i'm not it's just you have to kind of be critical of things but there was something that was said Absolutely. there i want to know i want to know on is um he made a comment about well, th these comics are a popularity contest of the people. When haven't, <laughs> when have not comics been a popularity contest? No, but it, 
Yes, but at the same time, like the people who are saying that are just going, the, the implication is yeah. my book is better than a bunch of professionals who became popular over the course of decades working in comics. And the, you know what I mean? The only reason why their books are doing well is because it's a popularity contest. Like if people saw Projectile Reptile, really, if they were given a chance to see it, uh, then my book would blow Isom away. It's just that, you know, I don't want yeah, to. They're name. not being realistic with their own, like their own shit right now. Right. I mean, Projectile Reptile, how good would it be if, it, if you didn't give it any kind of airtime, Ethan? I don't think it would do that good. It just it was just goofy. Just goofy yeah. fucking project, man. It's just uh, people are strange. Uh, what about the title Kenny the Catheter Cat? KKK. So you're Ash Matar. I like it. I like it. Uh Lizard Bukaki says man of action. Trebuchet turtle. Uh yeah. Well the weird thing is it was like, you know, it's like, oh, there's like a lizard. It's got four arms. He's from the from the west. Okay, but it's then a lot he like he, dude. It, there's so many things to be like. Okay, fuck it. I'm going with it. But then like he he time travels and goes back to like his previous comic book universe that like didn't sell it either. Like he had like a, a dojo cats. There was like these two uh, twin cat women. They there is just like like Catwoman, but like two of them and i think they're related and maybe they were making out i don't know it was fucking weird it was it was like weird cheesecake shit so this reptile guy isn't even like an original not i mean it's original but it's not separate so it's like oh here's this reptile but then it goes back to my other like weird what cheesecake is that shit. the projectile like he's the projectile that's going back in time or something or does projectile refer to his guns the bullets I, that are coming I out don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But at first, like, because I, I heard about the Catwoman stuff and was like, man, that shit's fucking weird. And then he came back with this new project, the Projecto Reptile, and was like, oh, this maybe this sounds kind of cool. And within like five minutes of the, of the pitch, he was like, you know, circling back to the girls. And it was like, oh, fuck, bro. Like, this isn't. Uh, you sell Bond this shit on your personality, dude. Back my book torpedo speedo today on Indiegogo. <laughs> it's another idea. All right, let me see. I think uh, I think quality does come into play. Does it uh, a little? Uh, in oh, some yeah, regards. Yeah, I mean, Jeez. look at uh, let's see here. Uh, Cash Grab was the first comics gate book I backed. I had to wait for it for a very long time. I was yeah. fine with that because honestly, I was sold that I was never going to get that book. That I. <laughs> Like, and I actually <laughs> thought that was pretty funny. Like, give me your money and you're never going to get the book. And I was like, take my money. You know what I mean? It was called Cash Rap, right? And, yeah. And it was, you know what? The book was okay. I, I like uh, the artwork was pretty good. The story was a little, like, disjointed. But still, I enjoyed the book. And you know what I liked more than the Cash Grab was the Dirtworm Doug book. Like, I want to take that. No, I don't actually want to take that. But that's a, it's a kid's book. So it looks like a kid's book. But it's most definitely not a kid's book. That's That was hilarious. And so this the experience is part of it, right? That was part of the fun of of do, of backing books. And some of the books looked better than others, but it was, I think, popularity and, and your numbers are definitely going to play a huge part. Stanley was making in here in the audience was uh, in the chat was making a good point about YouTube uh, live viewers. Okay, YouTube standpoint, live viewers doesn't hold a lit match to other available traffic forms. There are other opportunities available out there, and that does beg the question. Is YouTube selling these books? How many CG creators are not on YouTube? I don't have a huge presence on YouTube outside chat, Twitter, oh, and, and uh, like heckling Cecil sometimes. So a great example of that, Peter, would be Kenneth Roqueford. A yeah, perfect example. Yes. Kenneth, mm -hmm. is uh, he has appeared on a few channels. He's good friends with somebody like uh, Jeremy Lord Crackhead. So he's been on his channel. But he's been yeah. quiet, unassuming. He, he doesn't like the spotlight, but... He's definitely CG. He definitely enjoys the company of people in CG. Um, and he's hugely successful with Broken. So, but that was through YouTube. Whether he had his channel or not, his artwork was immensely... So you want to say something, my... uh, Matt? You want to point out what they're missing there? Yeah, the point that Broken is fucking phenomenal. The fact why that, is it like... phenomenal? Why, why, why is Broken... Why would a book like Broken be phenomenal? It's the artwork. The artwork is... 
like near perfect. Why I mean, is the artwork near perfect? What what led to the artwork being near perfect? The years and years that Roquefort had in the mainstream. Building is a that name. what you're asking? That's what I'm well, asking. Sort of. Uh, I'm going to say building a name and just he okay talent. yeah Year, I mean, years of drawing yeah his like, talent level is what it is it's like it's like a chicken what was first chicken or the egg like kenneth wouldn't had had years at dc or mainstream comics if he wasn't good though like yeah, that this is yeah. the weird thing it's not that oh he just brought all his fans from being at dc that's part of it but he would have never gotten in in all those years of work at dc comics if he wasn't if he wasn't Kenneth, great. Right. Yeah. He's, he, I mean, you look at his stuff and even if you didn't know about his comic book history, you would know that he was a professional artist. His stuff is that, that polished, you know, like, a, right. Like that Chad Townsend, like his stuff is super fucking polished. Like you might not realize like, Oh yeah. Like he's worked in animation. You might not have seen his stuff, but when you see his, like his, his artwork, it's super, it's super, super polished. Like Roquefort's man, holy shit! But but and it was said here is um, despite Kenneth not being on streams, Kenneth is getting like promoted by other YouTube channels, and I've brought Roken up many times on my channel. Like so, but Kenneth also benefits from doing work on other books that then promotes him in a weird way, whether it be Your Second Chance and Glorious Rex. Uh, John Malin had a Kenneth Roquefort cover. Every time we're selling one of those books. We are kind of bringing Kenneth up, even he's though putting he's he's grabbing it. the ore, right? Like Kenneth is like he's he's really like putting in the effort around the community with you know with working with different people. He's not just working on his own book. He's also you know doing a cover for you, doing a cover for X Y Z. You know he's really um, like pushing the whole community forward. But but every time we do that, we're basically, oh, Kenneth Roquefort, we're advertising him also. Yeah. Like, you know, there's there's a lot of factors there. Like, um, and I hate, like, people, I don't know, like, he's a weird example because it, to me, like, I think Groken should have sold more. Like, I I, I, I see the book, um, I'm, I'm just on artwork alone. I'm not going to talk about the story. But I, I'm like, this is a really good looking book that I feel like should have earned more money. But, you know, that's up to Kenneth. If Kenneth wants to get on streams and push his book and again, build a channel, which is a very important factor here. I, I you know, that's just my two cents on that. Yeah, I mean, uh, when Kenneth was on, like he was very quiet anyway. Uh, so I don't, you know, really Kenneth is like... Uh, a strange example. He's not the he's not the best example to use mm. for people like this. Um, for for those it's factors, like that Shaw Day song, that Quiet Storm, and he's never felt like this before. I love Somebody Shaw says Day. That's Rocket Fort right there. Somebody said Rocket Fort is awesome. Shane is just jealous. No, I'm his friend. I think I I what am I jealous about? I think I literally Ooh, just jealous. said the book should be doing better. Meaning, no, like, I agree I with that. Like, the book yeah. should. Th that's not an insult to say the book should be doing better. Obviously, it should be making a lot of money. Uh, so uh, more than it's making now because he's that. I good. just wish it was a little bigger. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be a little bit of a backer and a fanboy for a second. I just wish you guys would make bigger books, bigger, I'm, like I'm, larger size, like not larger thicker, size, larger. like magazine, like like Inglorious Rex and oh and, God, and Cyberfrog. Yes. I would pay that extra money for like magazine size. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah. know how hard that is. The I'm shipping as the a backer, problem. I would it, pay it, for a larger format. For Shane Davis artwork, the, I, the I, shipping. I, Eventually, I want to do like an artist edition type. Dude, book. my money is waiting. My money is waiting for that shit. Andy well, Smith I'll do it. I doing one. Andy Smith is oh, doing dude. one on code. Yes, I yeah. saw that. I, I want to. I want to see how that comes out and and ask him about the shipping of it. And one day I might do one. People are will. I think people are willing to pay. Like I really enjoyed Inglorious Rex. And my only gripe was that it, it felt a little small. I felt like I was. I was watching a movie, but it was like in a TV format. If that makes mm -hmm. sense, like I, I just wanted it. I wanted. I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. That's all. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, all right. So, uh, what are we learning here? We're nothing. We're learning nothing because uh, Kenneth Roquefort is like the point 
zero 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 one percent statistic. Like fact of the matter is he's superhumanly talented. Okay. He's mm -hmm. quiet. He doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to make a spectacle of himself. I'm sorry to say, because if he did, he'd be on this show. Um, <laughs> Kenneth, man, I loved having Kenneth on. And I, I was, I would just be like, Kenneth, how come you're hiding in the shadows? <laughs> Kenneth is like, I'm quiet. I don't want drama. I don't want any, I just want to. Okay. So like he, that's, that's who he is. His work is extraordinary. He's had decades of DC Comics, I think probably Marvel Comics too, gaining an audience. He's better than almost everybody. Uh, so his books are going to sell, not as well as they should. I think Shane's right. But they're going to sell really, really well, putting in almost no promotional work. What I'm trying to say is that's not you guys on the panel there. That's none of you guys equal that. That is not you. Mm -hmm. So you can't look at him and go, well, it's working for him. Mm -mm. Uh, you're not him, uh, you know, at all. So you you actually do have to uh, I, I uh, wanna respond accordingly. I want to stick this point a little bit more. Um, and it's not the, his years. At, I, to me, this is my take on it. And it could be wrong. I have wrong takes. But I don't want to credit that success he's having to D.C., because if he wasn't that good before getting to DC, like he would have never gotten there. So like, I hate it when people are like, Oh, he's a pro from the mainstream. It's like, no, he was that fucking good. Like there mm -hmm. was a point in time, DC comics in the new 52 was promoting him as the big shiny, big thing for Superman. Like they really promoted him. Now, if he wasn't that good, and if Dan didn't like his stuff that much, he would have never been promoted like that. Like it, 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 you really have to say the dude was good. It is good. And yeah, that, listen, that Elvis was awesome, you know, but if it wasn't <laughs> for his time at Sun Records, if it wasn't for the radio play that he got, if it wasn't for any of those reasons, uh, you know, he would have been a nobody. He would have mm. been a very talented hillbilly. Um, you know, uh, Kenneth Rocafort is incredibly talented, but there, you know what? There are, there are probably better artists out there that uh, are languor in obscurity because they, they didn't have uh, the uh, DC Comics, time at DC Comics, and the spotlight on them, I think, the way well, that we You did. really do need to give credit for time uh, spent at Marvel and DC and, and the ability to, like, just get into the door and get that gig. I mean, there's... You can't do it without <laughs> having super talent, like Kenneth You can't does, do it. But it, once it, you're there, The crazy gonna, thing is that there's, there's more active Navy SEALs then there are people working at the mainstream comics. Like mm -hmm. that's how elite it is at, 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 at the, uh, the mainstream comics level. You know, you have maybe 50 positions that you can say are full time, maybe, maybe a hundred positions. Let's say 200, let's say you have 200 positions at the top two. I mean, that's still, you have, I think 4,000 seals operating at any given time. So you're still like, rocking at a higher level than than you know than a seal i mean it, it's silly but it's like that's that's the level of like uh profession and like um i don't know like that's the level of quality and ability that you need to have to get there it's it's insane so just getting there is is amazing so yeah, kudos I think you're right there you go kissing that fucking ring shane davis is a hunk of hunk of burning talent Yes. Um, Thank you, Wooden Shot. Nicest thing you've ever said. Yeah. Uh, Al Campbell says EVS is like meal team six. Meal team uh, six. <laughs> Jay Dollar Sign series. Wait, you and Jay Dollar Sign are feuding all the time, right? No, nah, not really. He could suck me. <laughs> he could DM me and we could wrap it up. Huh. <laughs> Okay. orangutan looking fucker one time oh, we had dinner we had dinner at, at fucking at outbacks and i thought his wife was playing footsie with me it ended up being jay and i was like oh, oh my fucking okay. way, dude. anyways okay uh all right back to the show my stance i learned about kenneth rokerford's amazing artwork through the visions book and john malin's channel and then when I heard he was doing his own book called Grogan, do you the want to come on? on YouTube, I was impressed and had okay, to get in was, on that. It's without Kenneth having his own YouTube presence. Well, sure. Sure, sure. Yeah. But I'm, I'm curious who, like, there are people that don't have channels that are on Kickstarter that have, and they sell books. 
how many how many CGers are there selling books without that YouTube channel? It's almost like Comicsgate is it's like its audience is YouTube and yeah, and to I a smaller degree a, Twitter. There's a danger in that because YouTube could deplatform us at any time. Oh, here, here's a good. Oh yeah. John, yeah. Thanks for thanks for being here, John. Appreciate it. Eric Weathers is another good example. Not on many streams, but stays busy and has decent campaigns. Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. And he's so mentioned in everybody's streams, though. That's another. Well, that's a yeah. Why? His name he's is out there everybody's because he's in so many books. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't like this. I I, I mean, I this stream. Have you watched this already, Ethan? Mm -mm. Nope. All right. No, I meant to watch it. I, I was like, "Oh, that'll be a good thing to uh, to efap today," because the the topic actually drives me nuts. Uh, and I've Eric seen this does like logos. He does times. lettering. Eric is everywhere. I'm gonna what ask something, uh, and I might. This might not age well. Are they making excuses for everybody else's success or their failures? Uh, I think both. And I and um. Yeah, whoever whoever created this line of poison, this is really frustrating. And I, you know, when I hear people start talking about bend the knee and uh, this and that, uh, that uh, nobody knows what Comic Skate even is. When I hear that, I just go, okay. My my initial response to that was to try to talk to people and save them from themselves. Uh, and I used to have these conversations. Uh, Clint Stoker was somebody who fell for this bullshit. So many people who were doing really, really well, they got this dirt in their ear and they just immediately fell off, just completely fucking fell off the face of the earth. And that's it. That's the end of your little indie comic career. But I would always try to talk to him and be like, hey, dude, like seriously, like get it together. Like this is bullshit. You're loved around here. People want you around. And this this propaganda that you're spewing or that you've been a, affected by is going to hurt you. And the nature of this propaganda makes them say, fuck you, I'm not bending the knee to you. I'm not kissing your ring. I'm not falling for your manipulation. And you just go, at first I was like, shit, let me see if I can save you. Like now, as soon as I hear it, I'm just like, I'll cut you off like a fucking gangrene arm. Like, I don't care. Like, whatever, it's going to happen to you now. Uh, this whole, like, line of uh, thought is not endearing to comic skate. It's missing the point of comic skate. Uh, and, um, yeah, you're just hurting yourself. But uh, it's fascinating to hear it over and over. I want to know who's doing this to people. Because that's it. That's it. When this happens, it's pretty much it. Books. He's on every book. And they, they, they mention his name all the time. Everybody wants, you know, everybody wants Eric Weathers on their, on their book. Yeah. I can't come across his name so much in the videos I do. Fan to a fan to get out of there. Hey, uh, here's another one. Yeah. Where is the line drawn to determine whether someone is CG or not? I think if they're part of the audience or if they're, uh, uh you would. Well, I mean, if CG stands for completely gay, uh, the uh, crowd is going to decide. The customers are going to decide where that line is drawn. Be, I mean, you might be CG and nobody even knows you exist because you don't partake in anything. And that's, I still think it's all about the values and the ideas that we all kind of generally have some of similar fans, ideas. Bro that are consistent across the board and you don't necessarily have to speak out about it or not, but we all have those ideas. So Corey. here's, here's Corey's take. Corey Morton disagree. He says, how dare you, Corey? Corey? He says, I don't know about getting people to announce they are CG on X. Seems kind of forced and weird to me. The people I see as CG are kind of like my friends in this big community and we're here for good comics. Good point. Yeah, I agree with that. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want good Stop comics. Stop kissing the ring. I mean, no, without, wait, no, yes, continue kissing the ring. That's without the agenda. Point. See, the thing is, you can have politics in comics without espousing your agenda or trying to convince other people that your politics are the right ones. See, mm -hmm. people have been saying for a long time, well, you know, politics have been in the X-Men ever since. Yes, that's true. But they also presented both sides of the argument. Mm -hmm. So the politics that they were showing us still allowed you to make your own assessment of Hang what is on. right and what isn't. What is that's it? A lot not of people true. think that Magneto was right, to be honest with you. Uh, that's not true. Even Stan Lee said he didn't push politics in X Men at the beginning. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. That, he, you just did a false statement, and and like, of course, that it's like that's what SJW say about X Men. That's why X Men's in the fucking toilet right now. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. He literally came up with the mutant gene because he was tired of coming up with origin stories for superpowers. That was it. He he went on record saying that he wasn't making X Men political. 
Like there is a video uh, audio recording of that shit somewhere. I it's like, man, anyways, I, I'm sorry. That's a pet peeve of mine. Like when people just state something completely false to the truth. Yeah. Jay Bama fan grabbing Shane's anus cheeks says, uh, why aren't these cards <laughs> selling me a book? No, because it's easier to bitch about stuff than it is to sell her book. I, I mean, that's the truth, uh, you know, but they could do both. They could walk and chew gum at the same time. They could bitch about shitty Marvel books or DC books or Little Mermaids Black and sell their book and grow their YouTube channel at the same time. But mm -hmm. they would rather do this. Shout out to Gorilla Todd Comics in the chat. Good to see you again, Todd. Hope you're doing well. Um, all right. Yeah. I, I agree, Shane. Yeah. Um, um, there's a lot of just like navel gazing, kind of like, what is CG? Am I CG? Is this person CG? <laughs> like, just like long, I mean, long, long showers. They're just sitting in the shower looking at, yeah. at their fucking guts. There's gotta be like a set of rules for who gets to be CG and you know? It's like just and by the way, I always say actually do use Twitter. Um, if you're new to Comicsgate, people say, How do I join Comicsgate? Um, go on Twitter and start talking about your book and your comics, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and use the hashtag Comicsgate, and people will find you. And mm -hmm. that's kind of how it works because people will look up Comicsgate and they'll go, Oh, who's this dude? And then yeah. you'll slowly get kind of brought into the community and then just make friends, just be friendly. Yeah. Uh, and then That's come on our it. channels, let us promote your book, and then bitch about us afterwards. That's right. That's the old. That's the circle right there. And then say, I don't want to bend the knee. Uh, okay, dude. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> hey, Chances, you know, it's oh, tougher ahead. to sell without YouTube, I would imagine. I would think the comic market is a lot like the sculpting market now. So saturated, it's tough to make a buck. Hell yes. I hear here. I agree with that. I think um, there are markets are out there you can get out there. Broadsword Comics is a perfect example. Even though Jim Ballant, like we mentioned a few episodes ago, he did make a name for himself with Catwoman. Hmm. But I don't think that what that audience necessarily is what made Broadsword popular. That's a, that, how how big could that audience have even have been to follow him over before <laughs> the internet? Like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'd agree. Oh, thanks for joining, Luke. How he drew Catwoman. Yeah, I was, I was a huge fan of his because of how he drew Catwoman. I collected that book. I didn't give a shit what the book was about. That's right. <laughs> yeah. hey, you're I can have one of those too, I agree. <laughs> oh, so can I go off on a different take for yes. a second? What have you got? Um, if you guys remember, when I just posted a, a pic on Twitter or X, whatever it's called now, I, I of myself with a beanie, remember? Oh, yeah. And that guy came at me to get to Ethan. I had so oh, yeah. many people come to my defense. Dojo being one, all my co-hosts were like, you know, why are you, you, know, that, right? why are you picking on her? You leave her alone. And, da, da, da. <laughs> and, and that is what CG is to me. Yeah, but he, is, it, honestly, I don't think it was about you. I think he was just It wasn't. No, it was about Ethan. Ethan. To get those yeah. views, to get his Twitter out there, because I bet you dollars to donuts, if you check his profile, he had less than 500 followers. Set. Probably. Probably. That's what I'm, it's all about. Yeah, I'm just oh. saying. With the and way everybody came, it's even worse. Yeah. Hey, uh, to the comment about not having to announce yourself on uh, as CG on X, um, actually, I don't think you have to. Honestly, if you it, X, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, or TikTok, I found out if you post anything that is remotely CG oriented, you will be labeled CG. Uh, oh, so you don't have to announce anything. That's true. Well, I bought a CG beanie, so. <laughs> oh man, me, I went bro. to a convention decked out <laughs> nice. in, in Cyber Frog oh, hat, man. shirt, hoodie, the whole the whole nine yards, and awesome. I got some looks. I got a couple a couple people actually tell me that they completely disagree with me, but it was civil. Uh, it was tense, but civil. I'll give it that. Yeah, and that's that's was small, that was a small convention here in Waco, like <laughs> in like, Waco. I don't, I don't believe it. Kidding me? It was amazing. I even heard of CG. Actually, yeah. though, check it out. Uh, some of my former friends on Facebook. That, uh, you know, Emil Moon here. When I came out of CG, yep. See, Luke of Stone is a freaking back. boss. You know kind of well. Mm. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, they're not like say, "Hey, man, do this cover for me, nothing." But they're like, you know, I may have overreacted just a little bit. You're right. Mainstream comics is in the dumpster, and yada yada yada. Can we be friends again? <laughs> so yeah. I had wow. I had a uh, colorist on one of my books who he and I were getting along great. He was good to talk to, good to work with. When he found out I was CG, he quit. He said, oh. I don't want to be associated with you at all. Yeah. Um, now, I've recently seen him as uh, hired as colorist for one of my friends on Facebook. Now, this friend knows I'm CG, doesn't give a rat's ass. He's not, but he doesn't care. He doesn't care for labels. He thinks I'm doing a good thing with Dojo Kun Comics. And mm -hmm. I said to him, don't ever say that you're my friend you or are. this guy will quit on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, like, man. 
I, I hate to do, I hate to say that um, mm. because you should be free to do whatever you want. And, but this guy might just bail on you in the middle of your book. So be careful. And it's, it's such a shame. You got to be careful who you associate with because this colorist that quit on me, like I said, we were getting along just fine. All of a but sudden you should tell your friend, he needs to tell him immediately that he's friends with you. Because if it's, if the guy's that fragile, he, if he ever found out anyways, then he'd denounce him and ruin that comic. So get that's it out, true. rip that bandaid off. I suppose I that's my brother. I got a friend that's uh, kind of high up in the mainstream. I'm not going to say his name because, you know, okay. respect. And uh, Jim Lee. Uh, he actually unfriended me on Twitter after I tagged him in something. But then he sent me a DM, right? And he said, dude, don't take it personal, but I don't want people associating me with you. I, I think you're cool and all that, but it's the CG thing. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, that's a slap well, in the uh, face. You should have yeah, like released the DMs, man. <laughs> just yeah, to get wow. I played that once before. It did not go well. Yeah. It's a <laughs> I dick move, a lot of crap behind it. And then I make got a video one about that it. I'm very good yeah, friends with. Monetize them. He's like, monetize the you. haters. <laughs> I can't have you on my stream, bro. I'm like, why? He goes, CG, man. I don't want to get fired from a job. Yeah. So hockey likes computer graphics. What's going on, hockey? <laughs> hey, you said you were going to bring me on your show, and you never did. Uh -oh. And now I'm on Dojo's show. So uh -oh. all about good for <laughs> you, I'm Dojo. Peter side on this one, dude. You better put Peter on your show. We're coming after. You. I was doing artwork behind the scenes. No, this is uh, so true. Um, thank you, Literature Double. He says someone quits on you for being CG. It's good to know, since you know how fake and fickle they are, right, Shane? I've had that happen. Yeah, I know you have. It sucks, right? I mean, you you move on. I mean, I'm not gonna lay in the street and hold my belly and cry or anything. I mean, I'll just take up and move on. Yeah. yeah on the other hand, we don't hire people with pronouns on their bios, so uh, they can fuck yeah. themselves too. You know, yeah. I so I I mean, this argument, it's like I I get like like it. I don't know. Like if you're see, I don't know. Like. People say you you are CG as a way of uh, casting you out of the mainstream or whatever. For mm -hmm. some people, sometimes like you're CG because you want to be part of a movement and stuff, or you want to be part of the network. There's a lot of reasons that somebody can be called CG, um, or, or you just believe the same politics, or a, a, people in maybe you don't even make a book. Maybe you're just here for the live streams and. You believe the takes and you, you want to back the books or not. Maybe you just want to watch a YouTube in your CG. You don't even back books. I mean, like this is just a weird argument to have. And it, it seems like it's not a positive one. Like, I don't I don't understand, like, what 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 is their goal of the outcome of this argument? Because I I, I, I I guess I'm saying, are they rounding the corner somewhere here? Like, is there a point to this? Hmm. Well, you probably know better than me. You like, you know, you're aware of what's going on in these uh, crazy back rooms. So. Well, people <laughs> say things. People say things in these rooms, and then they don't realize how big the rooms are and how things slip out. So, yeah. Um, I'll leave it's not it. Not good that. to be in rooms. I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. I mean, you I might will... as well just post the shit on Twitter. I know. Yep. Seriously, it's going to get out. And don't say anything in private that you don't want people to hear because everybody is going to hear it. You know, that's one thing that you learn real quick when dealing on the Internet. Uh, this is um, Shane. Look at this. Comic skate hoodies are in. This is the comic skate hoodies. Uh, they're oh. camo, black and white camo with orange lettering on the front. I, I wore know. one yesterday. I never lot. saw this. Where was well, that's because they're secret. Um, oh. The only people who got to back them are people who are YouTube channel members if you join the channel you hit the join button you had an opportunity to back them uh, at a fairly low price uh, and uh, we sold a lot of them uh, i did order more than the people who backed them so uh you will have a second chance if you are a channel member now that they're in we're, we're, we're going to start shipping these out tomorrow uh, me and andrea uh, if you uh, would like to get a, a comic skate hoodie you guys who are channel members will have a second chance uh, to get one. So uh, we'll, we'll have a secret link for you, and uh, you'll be able to uh, participate in that way. Uh, so thank you. They say comic pros hate you. <laughs> Bite back. Comic skate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wear that, too. I mean, that's hardcore, Shane. Yeah, Wear no, that, 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 that uh, comic con. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's cold weather. That's right. I'm in cold weather now. I need a hoodie, says Luke Stone. We got them just in time. We're shipping them out to you guys uh, so that you'll have them uh, ASAP. And like I said, I think like for every like 12 that got ordered, we we bought another four in those sizes. I looked. 
we have 4XL. We yeah. have size 4XL, guys. Mm. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's great, right? That is great. We got some hefty big boys uh, in Comics Gate. Uh, so uh, we will have, uh, we'll probably have one that will fit you no matter how large you are, Bob. Uh, Bob says, I can't read. I'm getting uh, it in my hat. I'm excited to get my hat and my little ragline t-shirt. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got all that Let's stuff in. That. Everything is in. All the t-shirts are in. Uh, all of the hats are in. And we're ready to start shipping uh, the rest of everything else out. It's a small campaign, so we'll just bang it out real quick. Make sure that everybody gets their stuff. And uh, then, yeah, we're going to have a remainder product ready for Christmas. People can get this hat. People can get pretty much any hat. Comic Skate hats. Uh, all caps comics hats, t-shirts, comics gate t-shirts, and I have officially uh, been given the comic skate uh, trademark for apparel. It's officially registered now, hmm. uh, so uh, it is. Uh, isn't that nice, Shane? You Congratulations! Because like uh, how long were you at that? Uh, it took a little while. Like I have the comic skate trademark for comics and things like that, and uh, the the show. But to have it, especially on apparel, is a different matter. So mm -hmm. I went ahead and registered it for apparel as well. And uh, we'll see about what else I want to do with it. It's it's presumed that it's mine, like the trademark. But like if I want to specifically register it for one class of business, uh, I got to go out and do that. So uh, we, we can make as much comic skate clothing and T-shirts and stuff. And by the way, the offer still stands. If you guys are comic skaters and you would like to make a comic skate t-shirt or a hat, try to make a little money from it yourself, I'll say yes. Just ask me because I, I got to just distribute the uh, the trademark out. I will sub-license it to you uh, so that you can make a t-shirt, a pair mm. of socks, mm. a hat, whatever it is that you'd like to make. So that's the whole thing. Uh, all right. So back to uh, this incredible show. Here we go. I like these guys and it's almost done. And he said, we're going to bring you on. And what did he do? He got a bowler hat instead. You know well, what? Thanks, hockey. Bend the knee. That's a, bend the knee. That's a I didn't bend the knee to hockey. Comics. There it is, man. There it is. <laughs> I didn't bend the knee to hockey. That's, that's hockey's happened. loss. That's a win for Dojo Kun Comics. That's what I was talking about. Hockey's not on even. On no, remember I did that. Show. I don't remember what it was. There was some show. Y'all were doing the, the timed drawings. And I was just watching and dro and doodling in the background and then He's posting on dumb. Twitter. He's playing dumb, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, like, what? I don't have a you're show. You're right. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What's UG? What? Now, you know what? It's, What's a it's, YouTube? It's yes. 20 minutes All, too, Everybody must and bend the name. to look at. So um, Let's oh, do I'm going to take yeah. us off of this debate. Oh, wait a second. Wait, what do we have here? Even I managed to do JoJo's show. That's God right. Damn. Hockey haven't made it yet, but for shame, sir. For shame. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I secretly still love you. And it's like, also, pleasure to meet you. Yeah, we all respect wiggle, that. Wiggle, wiggle. Go do shit. it. This is incendiary after all. All right, so I'm going to do <laughs> I'm gonna do this. Bam. And move. Well, Don's not on. Look at that so handsome guy. I'm going to oh, leave, him, I'm gonna leave him up Jesus there. Jesus fucking Christ. humble, too. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go to <laughs> a mega mission. Are there, are there all right, let's take a look at these campaigns. Or what? <laughs> no, I want to get some women, man. Look at this guy. It's great. Well, yeah, he's here for the women, not mm. comics. <laughs> we got okay. a few. So, Don <laughs> Edwards is the creator of Omega Mission God's Eye. Warfare yes. freelance comic book artist Don Edwards has been on the indie comic scene since 2015, helping design hundreds of original IPs in pretty much every facet of making comics, writing, drawing, coloring, lettering, designing. Doesn't matter if it's comics, Don's done it. So, <laughs> yes, Don is now fulfilling his dream and putting out his own comic book. Don, would you like me to start with the trailer? Because it's pretty sharp. Oh, boy. Uh, Let's go. Damn, zero, zero. But if it plays, go for it. Why okay. would you take it down? It, it played for me earlier. It kind of sucked. What? I had some people look at it and it's like, dude, your trailer sucks. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, I bent the knee and I took it down. Let's see if you actually did. I guess I didn't. <laughs> you take me with me. Amen. I dream. I dream of a world. Carefully crafted, beautifully flawed. It's a good trailer. This yeah, this is. I, I wasn't expecting it to be this good. Of life, there is one thing that determines a victor: a player's ability to grow, a player's ability to evolve, a player's ability to survive. My name is Dog. 
choose to play. <laughs> choose <laughs> to upgrade. <laughs> choose to level up. Choose to accept. Sounded like he was saying Jews. Was he cursing the Jews, Shane? Oh, man. Oh, Shane's not going to answer that one. I thought yeah, he was sounded... saying choose. Like he's no. choosing something. No, he was saying Jews. He was blaming the Jews. First of all, it was no coincidence that they were showing images of like, I mean, if you if you look at the, all right, let's look at the trailer again here. All right, for real. Uh, it is completely subliminal what's going on. All right. It's accept. In this game of life, there is one thing that is ability to survive. All right, hold on. Let me see. Thank you. Ability Thank you. to survive. My name is Dog. So Shane is showing like a bunch of images of yeah. uh, buildings coming down. Looks a little bit like 9 11. Uh, am I wrong about that? I mean, that like this looks like 9 11 to me. It's more like an 812, but yeah, yeah, 911. <laughs> to play. Fuck. Choose. You're blaming the Jews for 911? Yeah, the Jews. I think it was inside job near the Diamond District. It really does just feel like that's what you're doing. So uh, I see right through you. Uh, Shane Davis's accent uh, is live and almost at $100,000, Shane. No, oh, yeah, Shane, yeah, yeah, we're moving, we're moving. Uh, it closes in six, is that six days, five days? Six days, ma'am. Mm. Get over there, back it, guys. We got a John Malin cover, we got a Mark Texera cover. And go check it out, the Spider-Man Meets Tron, my superhero book. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. That sounds like a good combo. Yeah. Kids with superpowers, um, you know, trying to use them, learn responsibility. Chaos happens. The world doesn't accept it. You know, a lot of a high stakes adventure. Mm -hmm. What well, I, I stepped away for a second, get something to drink. My throat's killing me. Uh, what did I miss? Well, they were showing their trailers for their books. So I just went ahead and showed Accent instead. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. Uh, no, but while, but I will never I will never um, bitch about you on the live stream, Ethan. I, why not? <laughs> that's I, like isn't I, that's what you do, right? I mean, it, yeah, isn't that all you, you do? just bitch right to him? <clears throat> yeah, I'll bitch to you. I'll let you know. Yeah, you just send I him agree. a DM. Just be like, man, what the fuck? Yeah. Woden shot says we should have a John Malin memorial cover. Mm. Yeah, I do. His last cover he ever drew. It's on this campaign. Go back it. Do you think he's dying? Like, what's up with John? John's going to come back on Friday, he said. And I know why, because Friday is my birthday and Ballers is on my channel this week. And he's going to he's going to rob me in my birthday. He's going to be like the return of John Malin. He's going to come back. He's probably been two weeks is long enough for him to go to Brazil and get hippo suction. He's going to come back looking like probably about hippo like suction. A, a, probably hippo. a buck 80. He's going to come mm. in looking like 180 pounds. And be like, I'm I'm more fit than everybody here. And look at me, I'm John Malin. Fuck Shane's birthday. All of that is happening Friday, I promise you. I don't want to see a skinny John Malin. That's weird. You announced your birthday earlier in the week. How's it been so far? Uh, I went to the P.O. box and somebody actually mailed me a lot of Ghost Rider comics. Because hmm. I, I like uh, Mark Texera's Ghost Rider. Yeah. So they, they sent me almost like a what looks like a full collection. It was pretty big. I used to I have a, to an it. old Marvel book. You know, it was like a really big, thick book. It had Spider-Man on the cover. And like the last chapter of the book, it had Mark's like going through like how how you make a comic. He was like doing a page out of Ghost Rider. I don't know if you remember that Marvel book. Wow. It like showed him like kind of going through, you know, making a page. Some of his pages of Ghost Rider transforming to me are like he he just has these montages of his face like boiling off. Yeah, dude, or even sick. even worse when he's transforming back, it's like then it's a skull with meat kind of growing back. It's like I don't. It, it was just to me as a kid, I was like, this is insane that this will never happen in a movie and th this shit. Yeah, I mean, where else can you do this but comics? And then Ghost Rider mm -hmm. had really cool word balloons. It was like, 
it, it was, was dark, just crazy. Man. It, it was, was just dark. crazy. It was dark, but I, I also Spider Man would run through chasing Hobgoblin. Mm-hmm. It was like a lot of fun stuff happening at that time. Um, I, I don't know. I, but I also liked some of the Qbert stuff on Ghost Rider the, when they were doing the uh, Rise of the Midnight Suns or whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just liked that comic. Like it, it was like a fun, different comic. And then I like Punisher comics. Um, I don't know, but I also would like shit like Guardians of the Galaxy back then by Jim Valentino. So and Spider Man and Silver Surfer, like X Men. You know, I was a big Marvel kid. Yeah, ditto. Uh, I uh, I like Mark Texiera, but you know what I like. Uh, when I was over at uh, at Marvel Comics myself, he you know drawing new X Men. Uh, my boy Mark Texiera did a Cyclops miniseries. Do you remember this? Written by Brian K. Vaughn. No, uh, I think it was inked by Jimmy Palmiotti. Um, and uh, it was uh, you know, I mean, not his best effort, but uh, look at this. Uh, um... mm. It looks like you know what it looks like. It looks like Joe Casada artwork. I remember him doing like Maverick and stuff a couple of times. That was he did Saber Tooth. He did a really cool yeah. Saber Tooth mini series. Mm-hmm. Shane, do you want to start drawing like this? Like you know, here's the thing: when you're drawing a lot of comics, you can kind of take a break and fuck around and do different things. Like he kind of went, you know, I'm just gonna be very, very loose here. I'm gonna use a whole lot of like black ink. And uh, look at look at what he did here. He just sort of indicated where the legs are, and then did the the effect, the speed lines behind it, to sort of define where the legs are here. Uh-huh. He didn't even do like a nice line around it. He just went, yeah, this is where they kind of are. Look at his little nutsack here, Shane. Oh and my his god! Penis. Why why did he do that? I mean, Shane, I, I that's like a little like, juggernaut. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. You can see, like, first of all. I don't know what this is, but you can actually see his urethra here. This is the head of his mm-hmm. peen right here. Yeah. Like that, those are tight pants. Like, Super here's the thing. Tight. Yeah, like I've worn uh, tight underpants, and you know, it's like you can see acorn, like you can see the shape of, uh, you know what I mean? Like, but I've never worn uh, underpants so tight that you could see urethra. Uh, <laughs> I've never, like, that's. I, I think I can see juggernaut's red helmet you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. yeah the rim it's Hmm. little it's little Uh, too much information what the fuck says beautiful dark twisted faggotry yeah a bit uh that looks like jimmy if he was the inker did finishes on loose pencils that doesn't look like you remember people used to do that on a rush deadline they'd have like you do the dc vouchers and there would be a finishing rate yeah 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 I, this just looks like Jimmy Palmiotti to me. I could be wrong, but it's certainly the, don't, don't you think it looks like Jimmy? Arm. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Long time no see, Cyclops. The Hi, black arm looks eyes. good, but that arm looks kind of weird the way the bicep is going into the, the forearm. Oh, yeah. Look at really that. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, I guess that's like monthly comics, right? You're just like fucking churning them out as quick as you can. I, I feel like, yeah, this was done really quick for some reason. Uh, Look at his long right. ass legs. Holy shit. Uh, here we go. Ouch. Did anybody ever teach you boys not to hit a man with glasses? That's not a cool thing to say when no, you're a superhero. That would be like on my wall of things that Cyclops would never say. Mm-hmm. That's what a superhero would say when protecting Cyclops' bitch ass from getting smacked. Like, like a and real Clark superhero. Kent. And Clark yeah. Kent. I would never have Clark Kent say that. No. Well, you know what? Like, uh, he would say, like, what if Clark Kent were there and somebody bitch smacked Clark Kent and his glasses flew off and they turned around and were like, oh shit, it's Superman. He'd say, didn't anybody teach you that to hit a man with glasses? Yeah, but if you bitch slap Clark Kent, you'd break your hand. Like, you know. Like, yeah, well, that's true. I mean, it wouldn't happen. Like, your hand would be like jello. Yeah. But I mean, the point is, like, see, like, you hit my glass, you hit a man with glasses, glasses fell off, and you realize that man is Superman, who's now going to fuck your ass up. 
Like that's that's what I'm saying. That'd be the implication of that, you know. Mm. Kind of cool, maybe. But this isn't. This is like, ouch! Didn't anybody ever teach you boys how to hit a man with glasses? <laughs> you could be wrong, but I I don't think if you knocked off Clark Kent's glasses, I don't think he would do anything to you. I think he might like give you a little look, but I mm. think he's like that controlled. Yeah, I, I don't know. So. I like Superman a lot, and I feel like he's like super controlled about like his shit. He might be like, "Look, dude, you just knocked my glasses off." Like, I think he's, yeah. he's controlled enough to like smack the shit. Out of you. Hey, Matt Bar, uh, what, yes, what do you think of this background right here that was done? I think it looks like shit. I don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this think, background. I keep wanting mm-hmm. to think they're in the rain, but they're not. <laughs> it's no. like, <laughs> yeah. What do you think of this line art on Juggernaut's chest, which is meant to represent the color black or substitute for the, does it work? No. I kind of like the outlines of both of them, maybe the silhouettes of both of those, those front figures. But like, other than that, I don't, I don't like anything. Yeah. I don't like anything either. All right. Hold on. I'd lay into Juggernaut with enough force to rip a small planet in half. Zacked. <laughs> mm. uh, I don't know what's going on back here. Like, uh, I think that's supposed to be like black Tom Cassidy jumping. Yeah, no, that's his legs all the way to the left. I see the bottoms of his feet. So he's <laughs> jumping behind Juggernaut, I think, but it's all fucked up. He smiles like I hit him with a spotlight. Ah! <laughs> like me, Black Tom is the mutant who can discharge energy from his body. Give up now and we won't cripple ye first. That That's false. Yeah. He can't discharge energy from his body. That's why he has that stick. He has to mm-hmm. use wood to shoot his power. That's actually false. Yeah. Oh. Like most men, he needs a... He needs. He can only shoot to... his energy through wood. <laughs> exactly. No, that's he's, true. He's, that's he's, why. He's, that's why they call. What is that stick called? It's something. It's like, like black Scottish wood, guys. right? Or something. No, no, no. Scottish guys have that. Somebody in the chat. A shillelagh. A shillelagh. Yes. So he has a shillelagh because uh, whatever, a walking stick of sorts mm-hmm. uh, for herding sheep. I think is what it's for. It's Am like I a wrong? Fighting, fighting, walking stick. You know, a it makes, it makes you think stick. of the the guy in um. Gangs in New York who's like putting little notches. On I don't know fucking... what's worse that some editor didn't catch that problem or that the writer didn't know that or that I know that. Like, I don't, I don't know what's worse that I know Black Tom has to have that stick to shoot his juice. Juice? Juice. It's oh, essence. Juice. Look at Cyclops. It's like how he channels his, his like, you know, mutant energy. He needs a, right. a channeling device and he yeah. uses that shillelagh. It's kind of like how Iceman originally had to have a belt to uh, control his ice powers. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever brings that up anymore, ever. Somehow I know that. Useless knowledge. Now I know. Thank you. Uh, all right. So here's Cyclops doing like tumbles in the air. Oh, uh, which like Nightcrawler would, you know. That doesn't make any sense. That's yeah. not what he does. Mm-hmm. And then he lands straight up like he never moved. Like I don't I don't understand this. So he's upside down. Then he's he puts on his visor. Oh, he's flipping right now. He's upside down flipping. Then he lands. That's his collar. And then boom, he's got his visor on. So I got trying... a question about the optic blast, right? If he yeah. didn't have a good footing, wouldn't he just fly backwards from the force of it hitting? Like when once that beam connects to the ground or whatever he's aiming at, wouldn't that if he his footing wasn't right, wouldn't it knock him backwards? Like how is he Ooh. blasting through mountains? But he's you think not there's blowback? Backwards? You're wondering if there's like blowback. I, it, it's it's force meeting. It's just the physics of it. Like I don't. Mm-hmm. What the hell is the optic blast? Anyways, is it heat? Is no, it, no, mm-hmm. right? It's kinetic. Yeah. Right, there's no heat. It's, yeah, it's just force. Like it's yeah. But that would push his ass back. That's what I'm saying. Like he. Yeah, he, but it what? doesn't. Though. You're right. I could. I could see that. It it's like a reason. fireman with a fire hose, right? I mean, like. Yes, it, I have been called that. Yeah. Oh, you mean the oh, this yeah. guy? All right, hold on. <laughs> Unlike me, his name sucks. I switch from glasses to 
battle visor for more precision. This may be a little tricky. Ha, you missed by a mile. Blowing up a car is a lot harder than it looks in the movies. Puncturing both sides of a fuel tank to draw in the proper amount of oxygen is a one in a million shot. Ah, oh, crap. Shane. Kaboom. No. I mean, to be honest, I, that's a good steering wheel he drew. It is good. See, I wouldn't have thought of that. Like, if I have a car exploding, I'd have the tire, sure. I'd have the body coming apart, maybe a car door. But I wouldn't ever think to have the steering wheel flying at the viewer. That's yeah, like that's weird. Just, that's like, why? Well, but I, I think it's kind of cool, too. Doors. But you know it. You go, that's a steering wheel. So that's from a car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does tell the story. I, I would have probably added a uh, car door or something. Yeah. Silhouetted. Maybe some fuzzy dice flying at me. The keys, the car keys. A, car, a baby car, car seat. A car oh, a baby seat. car seat with a baby still in it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Kaboom, it says. Kaboom. Thankfully, I'm a pretty good shot. Uh, Tom! I feel so bad about the truck. It, that uh, That is... I, wait, I feel bad about the truck, that is. I always remind my teammates to inflict collateral damage only as a last resort. Look at this. this is like it looks like, like he's getting ready to blow him. Like what the yeah. fuck is he doing? I don't Eat know, him. dude. What may be a simple diversionary tactic to us could be years of car payments to a normal civilian. I'll have to remember to send a check. You hurt my friend. Oh, You're yeah. a dead man. Yeah, Cyclops mm. blows up some dude's truck and he's dropping his uh, insurance information. He's like, I gotta hang around the scene and exchange insurance information. It's like... Unlikely, I, right? Little... I, I mean, why put that in there? I mean, like, this is like a fast action now turning into rage scene and, and you're gonna start talking about, like, damaging public property and, and I gotta hang around and toss money to whoever's truck that was. That's weird. I would it edit that weird. out. I would edit that out. That's like a tangent. It is a mm, tangent. That... I would get rid of it. Nice spittle, says Luke Stone Studios. Yeah, I don't know if it's spittle. I think it's like snow. Yeah, it went from rain to snow now. But it's only in the black areas. Well, uh, let's keep it's it. It's not that way. in any of the other, like you don't see it over his helmet no. or over his fingers. It's just in the black areas of the, of the image. It's like a weird masking. Uh, it, was there ever a reason why Juggernaut and Black Tom were so close? Like, was there a reason for that? Secret Besides gay? Because they seem gay now, looking back at it. They kind of seem gay. No. You know what? That That's probably true. Like, if they came out and said the Juggernaut and Black Tom are gay, I'd be like, all right. You know, why is it always got to be Superman? You know? Okay. Maybe they're just two guys who like to go to, you know, to pubs and bars and get smashed and then like smash and puss together. You yeah, know? but I'm not. Why do they got to be gay? My friend, I I, 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 yeah. I go to bars with. I'm not holding him and crying over him if he falls down. Yeah, I know. I you wouldn't know, care. Yeah. I've never read this comic book. So I, I mean, I, I would probably point and my, laugh. My if of, of them if he too. fell down, if my friend I go to bars with fell down, I just point and laugh. I wouldn't cry. Yeah. By the way, that gay, uh, the guy, not gay, but that S straight W who just got stabbed to death. Like, wouldn't it be nice if his girlfriend did this? Hmm. Like, his girlfriend's <laughs> not there. She, She's like, she didn't say, you hurt my friend. You're a dead man. She just went, please look after him and make sure he's okay. He's clearly oh, having man. some problems. I it's still think about that. I'm never going to forget that video. Like, I feel like the world has become completely inhuman. Like, like anti-human. Just based on the interaction between all every single person in that video, bizarre. Uh, he's crying because it was probably his lover, said Luis Velez. Yeah, I know. I got a question about that video. So, yeah. when the dude, I'm was the kicking, guy to answer it, the black guy that <laughs> that the guy that stabbed, he walks yeah. up yeah. the street and he starts kicking something, and then he's like, Hey, don't do that. And then that started a whole interaction between them. Like, what did they say? What was going on there? Because you can't really see it. Is it kicking scooters or something? He's kicking some scooters. He's going, God damn it. He, he just played a bunch of scratch off lotto tickets and he lost all of them. He yeah. was in the hole like 12 bucks. So he was pissed and he's, he's kicking some scooters. 
And then, um, yeah, there's a social justice war. We forget about what social justice warriors are. Uh, he's like, uh, I've learned the language of the person of color. Uh, so I will go up to him and I will condescend and patronize him and let him know that I am on his side. So they walk over to him, which makes zero sense. Why are you going over to that person you with your that girlfriend? Fucking weirdo alone. Holy it's fuck. four in the morning, by the way. That took place at 4 a.m. And you're going to go over there and you're going to go talk uh, to the it. angry black man in a hoodie who's kicking motorcycles and screaming, I'm going to fucking kill. Dude. And you're going to go over to him and be like, please chill. I'm on your side. I'm your ally. Is everything okay? Are you okay? And the dude goes, I'm going to fucking kill you. What are you looking at? I'm not looking at anything. Uh, and then Damn. he comes after you. He takes a step forward towards you. And you go, eh, like this, Adam. I'd say, I'm on your side. Stop. And then he does this at your neck. And I'm telling you, he cut him. I'm telling you, he cut his neck wide open at that point. I saw Ooh. that hand movement. I didn't put together that that was uh, that that's where he got him at. Like I now that you say it, it makes sense. But I never saw the full video. I just saw the blurred out version. Like that, yeah. there's a clip taken out of it in the middle too. I don't know why. Yeah, happened. well, I've seen the whole version. You can you can find the whole version. It's not it, you know it. The reason why they wouldn't show it is because you are watching a man being murdered, but it's not bloody. There, I didn't see any blood at all, you know, um, so it's it's hard to remember that. But yeah, like he runs away confused and disoriented and it, like two steps, he forgets there's a park bench there with metal dividers that he catches right in the forehead and he falls over. It's the most embarrassing slaps. Please don't. God, let me die honorably. Please, God, I. I don't embarrass me. That's all I'm saying. Please. I don't want to. I, I'd like to die in bed in my sure. 90s. Mm -hmm. But if I am murdered, please make it look cool. God, please. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, man. You're asking a lot. I'm I know. Saying. I know. But so I, I don't fucking talk to some dude. If you're sitting there at four in the morning on the street in New York City, if you see some guy kicking shit that is not yours at the yeah. end of the block. Leave yeah. him the fuck alone, man. Like, take your fucking dose of none of my business and just just get home. Exactly. But he Dude. wouldn't do that because he's a social justice warrior who has learned to speak the language of tolerance. And if we if we could just listen to these nah. people, if we could just they're just he's only angry because he's poor and the circumstances of uh, our society have kept him oppressed and all. Of, if I could just go. Bro, could we just rap for a minute, you and I? And I, can we I just get rap? You, right? nope, <laughs> nope. And you're like a fucking nerd with like glasses like this and a little afro and like a fucking. Uh, We're in know, a suit a, from a, a fucking complete, wedding, you know? Yeah, you're a soy boy. Get, uh, and you're going to go up to him and be like, please, oh, I understand you. Like the dude, uh, I mean, honestly, it's ridiculous. And you're I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe me saying, nah, man, don't talk to the guy, don't make eye contact. Just fucking watch your own little Please. area. Even like maybe that could have gotten you killed. Got but I know for you. sure what he did got him fucking killed. You know, yeah. don't fucking go talk to these fucking people when they're losing no. their shit. What do you want the streets bro? for of Brooklyn at 4 a.m.? This, this is a what the question. hell. But the day nothing good happens after two o'clock. Nothing uh, good. No. Nope. Yeah, I mean, nope. but uh no. what what did they catch the guy? Like, I, I don't keep up with the news. By the way, that guy, uh, the guy who got <laughs> killed, both of his Hulk. knees were bent, uh, by the way, at the time of his ah. death. He did end up bending the knee, if you look at the, uh, the yeah, footage. So both of those fucking knees were bent up, twisted yeah, around. They were Fuck. bent. Bend the knee. Yeah, it's terrible. It's absolutely you terrible. Just leave just... people alone, man. People go through their fucking, like, their, their insanity, and you leave them alone, especially in that city. Holy no. shit. Just, like, seriously. Uh, and especially, again, especially when you're with your woman. Damn, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't he know. left anyway. really late, though. Do you think, he, I mean, this is fucked up. Do you think he was going to get some when they got home, though? Because that's late as fuck. Like, four in the morning? Oh, you think he was trying to get laid by showing how, like, maybe how what? Like, 
I don't know. Let's see you are. It's like it's really late. Hey, like I can I can only imagine taking like Mrs. Bar home at four in the morning. That's not like, hey, let's start messing around. That's like I'm going to bed, dude. It's four in the morning. Four in the morning, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of New York you can drink up until like three AM, four AM, some of the bars, I think. Oh I yeah, yeah. I mean I used to live there. You know, there was there was times where we would leave bars and see people going to work. Like he would no. be like fucking like opening the bar door and it would be like like light and shit. So I mean, there's definitely like spots where you can you know you could party all night long. It's well, just, what do you do? You you see that and you go you you take your woman and you go we're going we're going we're leaving. Honestly, yeah. If I was we're sitting at that, that bench Otherwise. and this guy was going cuckoo for cocoa puffs at the end mm-hmm. of the block, I would I would probably I'd probably we're start going moving. across the street. We're going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to protect or, her. I mean, first and at foremost. four in the morning, I I would have been like Uber Uber uh, Ubering that shit. I wouldn't have like. Why don't you have a fucking car? That's the other thing. These New Yorkers are. I'm waiting for the bus. The bus. The bus. So nah. you're in a, now a contained uh, area with people like that who are the sitting bus. there shitting themselves and stabbing their the seats. Yeah, that uh, would have been an Uber. I would have Ubered car. some sort of car to get or called a cab to get me the well, fuck home at four I, in the it morning. It looked like when he was on the bench, he was messing with his phone. So maybe they were kind of doing that i i don't know like there, there was it, it's weird that he went from looking at his phone on the bench to like hey i'm just gonna try to stop this guy from kicking a car it's like all right were you trying to flex in front of your girl like were you like hey look at me be superman i'm gonna be a vigilante for a minute because there's a chance that, to really make a difference right didn't that guy like identify he did identify as antifa but what am i wrong was he a, a journalist What's he? I don't know if he was a journalist, but he was Antifa, and um, yeah, Antifa. Listen, I don't care. As soon as I like, if you're a liberal or something, <sighs> I hear you're Antifa. I'm like, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. You're not not too big and brave when there's not a pallet of bricks to reach. When for there's no mask over your face, you know, when you're uh, not hitting people with bike locks. Sorry, you know, so I'm just so somebody sorry with that like that kind of mental, uh, you know, issues, you know, where they're physically violent, they're ready to lash out, they're already in a high stress condition, they don't care like what your political fucking leanings are. No, none of them do. Like, that, nobody cares. They're crazy. <laughs> like, like, this is the thing white liberals think that, like, you know, they can condescend hard, real hard to people of color and people they call marginalized. And that's going to like protect them in some way from people who are, uh, you know, actually, uh, you know, criminals that are going to get them uh, hurt. It's not going to work, guys. You don't have the magic key. You're not immortal. Uh, you're not special. Uh, you're just a fucking idiot. And, uh, that <laughs> video, that video did make me uh, make you what? Cry. Hmm. It bummed no, me out. Laugh. It's definitely it's a laugh. fucking. What not to do video for sure. Yeah, how uh, how not to die uh, in Brooklyn. Don't do anything this guy's doing. Uh, all right, now oh. Juggernaut. No one can take Juggernaut in a fist fight. Now, Shane, look at this. This is what the guy should have done. Simple. See what I'm saying? Ran. yeah. Here he is. He goes, oh, shit. That's what he should have done. Go the other way. Um, since when does Cyclops run from a fight? Who cares, you daft moron? Get him. Okay, so now they're chasing after Cy- Shane. You like this? No, <laughs> I like Mark <laughs> Texera. I don't like this book. He doesn't draw like this when I like him. Shane, look here's the uh, here's the uh, video we were just talking about right here. Mm-hmm. Thought you could outsmart me, huh? Well, I'm not the dumb thug I used to be. I've changed. Heck, I even fooled the government into letting me work with them for a stint. I got plans now. And offing you is going to help buy me a whole new life. So, any last words, kid? Yeah. I'm glad you don't float. What? Is that sploosh? Into the ice. It's badass, dude. I do like that, but... um. The, just the falling through the ice, that part. Like I do, That's I do like idea. that because it's Juggernaut. Now he's going to float to the top, but he is going to float, but he's going to be in the ice cube. Hmm. He's going to be all blue, and Black Tom's going to have to give him some some warm coffee. 
Yeah. Some Irish coffee. Yeah. Can Juggernaut yeah. Juggernaut can't drown? No, the with the he can actually walk at the bottom of the ocean because of the crimson stone of Sidorak. It creates a an air bubble around. No, him he's that just he impervious. Breathe. He's just oh, okay. impervious. That's it. He's walked at the bottom. I, of I knew the he ocean had that before. that 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 stuff. I wasn't sure if that you know if it also worked in water as well. Mm -hmm. JD Kirby says that stinks. Oh, yeah. JD Kirby, come on, be nice. You kind of remember like when Spider Man fought the Juggernaut. Yeah, and, uh, Rob Liefeld. No, 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 no. That was like an original old comic. I, I don't. I can't remember who was the artist though. It wasn't Ramita Senior? Was it? No. Hmm. Yeah, I just remember the Liefeld one, where they dropped one of the buildings on him. Yeah, <clears throat> Juggernaut encased in concrete. Uh, Spider Man fight awesome, yeah. It was something like that. It was John Romita, was it? It was John Romita Jr. Okay, it was not senior, it was junior. And concrete stopped him. I don't remember how that, dude. I, I've heard so many comics, I can't remember. shit I just remember sh like flashes of things, and I'm like, that was cool. And I now I'm Do you remember back. any episode of He Man. No, because they were it was always bum plots. I mean, it was always like I found this device and now I have He Man <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. And then it just there's it's all like mud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the same thing with like G.I. Joe. I for the life of me can't remember one single episode. I remember one episode of G.I. Joe, the ending, it was like a giant blob, and the G.I. Joe were like, We're going to uh fight this thing by throwing apples at it. Yes. And the reason why I remember it is because it was so absurd. The it wasn't the apples that were destroying this giant blob that was eating everything. It was the apple seeds because it yeah. had the apple seeds had a little bit of acid in it. And I was like, oh, my God, I just swallowed apple seeds. Arsenic. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, it was like it was arsenic. Like Dude, I remember seeing that as a kid and be like, what the fuck? And I was like looking at apples and like made sure that I never ate apple seeds after yeah. seeing that fucking episode. And, then the, it, the only one that really caught me was that Serpentor uh the Serpentor, you know, uh, mini series where they were going around and collecting different uh, pieces of different like bad guys. I remember that one. But um, you know, what I stuff. driving me crazy about this juggernaut story is it starts off rain, I guess. Yeah. And then, and then they're in a blizzard all of a sudden and their ice. It's like I that is poorly established, established. I'm just saying it's makes no sense. Is he kissing Black Tom? Like what? What is? Yeah. Mm. Look, boy, I told you. Told me what? That me friend would be out in two shakes. Uh oh. And look, I brought a date. Oh, Give up now, or I twist the innkeeper Broad's arms off. No, please. <laughs> hmm. Well, you might as well. You blew up her truck, Cyclops. Well, what do you? What the hell do you think you're doing? Playing your game. You have ten seconds to drop her, or my next shot takes Tom's head off. Tom, no! You can't just take a hostage. You're supposed to be one of the good guys. Oh, ah! <laughs> you, you think you're the only one who's changed, Juggernaut? You have no idea what I've been through recently. Stop bitching. The days of me risking anything for some human girl are over. I might as well just scalp Tommy here just for the fun of it. Oh, but protecting people's your job. I'm on vacation. Two, Wait, three, uh, two. Hang on. Hang what? on. Is the bad guy now trying to convince the hero to still be a hero? <laughs> yes. <laughs> By the way, he has swallowed a man, uh, a yeah. man's head, and his tiny teeth are in his mouth. Oh, my God. Can you see that? Like, he's eaten like a person. And that person's teeth are like in his mouth. Like, oh, yeah. Geez, the yeah. teeth don't fit the skull. Yeah. No. Fine. Just don't hurt my friend. I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a murderer. Uh, yeah, I was fairly certain my bluff would work. Everyone has a weak end, a weakness, even the juggernaut. I like the guy All putting right. the gorilla glue in his ear. That's smart. <laughs> this is a tinnitus <laughs> discovery. <laughs> It oh. leaves doctors. If you if you have tinnitus, it means you're always got in your ear. Mm -hmm. Right. This fixes that. So if you, if you put glue in it, it clogs yeah. up 
like shave your head and your eyebrows off. Probably, yeah. Shane Davis uh, and Matt Barr, uh, He Man. Mm. He Man's five gayest adventures. So <sighs> if you don't remember He Man, uh, we're going to remember He Man together. Look at this right here, oh, Shane. Shit. Mm, right. This is probably why you liked He Man so much, Shane. I liked the character design of Trapjaw and Merman. That's pretty much it in Skeletor. Like, you they don't like man at all. I never arm. no, seriously. I I the same with G.I. Joe. I had the bad guys as toys. I I only mm. Transformers that I have the good guys and bad guys. He Man, it was always the bad guys. <laughs> G.I. Joe, it was always the Cobra. Like I, I never had the good guys. I don't, I don't there, was, there were some really good designs in those two shows when it came to the bad guys. Doesn't this guy's helmet look like a penis helmet? Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to argue. It's very secure. Yeah. It looks like if He-Man just continues to stroke this guy. <laughs> yeah, where's his hand at? Yeah. That's just kind of weird. Uh, when it comes to the classic filmation television series He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, not much of a stretch to find homoerotic subtext in its ham-fisted dialogue and hyper-masculine brutishness. However... There are times in the sci-fi hero's quest to fight the forces of evil with his fabulous secret powers uh, that it seems to move beyond mere inadvertent sexual suggestion and right into, oh, that's just gay territory. Here are five of He-Man's gayest moments. This is the Cosmic Comet here. Do you remember this episode, Shane? No, I told you I don't remember any episode of He-Man. Look at He-Man hugging this pillow and, like, gritting his teeth and everything. Uh, is that what that is, a pillow? That's what it looks like, but it, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Look at the way his fingertips are engaged with it. That's a pillow. <laughs> That's definitely That's a pillow. gelatinous for sure. Yeah. And the very first episode of He-Man, titled The Cosmic Comet, the evil Skeletor harnesses the power of a wandering comet that ever since its mate was accidentally destroyed has grown bitter and evil. Uh, under the sorcerer's control, the comet attempts to stop a self-deprecating old wizard called the comic keeper from rebuilding its destroyed lover uh, by attacking him with genitalless roided out rock men right here. He man wrestles with the evil comet long enough for his friends to fill the new one with their love, defeating Skeletor and enabling the happy couple to once again travel the, the galaxy in harmony. And just when you think this storyline couldn't be any more of a head scratcher, you discover that both of the comets are actually male. Oh my God. Oh shit. Yeah. That's weird. Skeet, skeet, skeet. Here's the quest for He-Man. In the quest for He-Man, our hero falls through a rainbow-colored time corridor. Look at that. And mm -hmm. into the environmentally devastated world of Trannies, uh, <laughs> where he encounters Plundor, the spoiler. Uh, so here he is riding that purple uh, tranny rocket uh, there. A lisping, rabbit-headed captain of industry with an unexplained penchant for polluting the seas. And killing off the planet's wildlife, Plundor is immediately enamored by the powerful-looking brute and offers to make great use of his muscles. He-Man politely turns him down in a way that can only that only he can by straddling Plundor's liquid-filled rocket and riding oh it into the God. stratosphere, Jeez. literally. Ski, ski, ski. Is this guy? I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to go on the... On the I'm, I'm going to say it is. Yeah. Uh, they're pointing out that any appearance of Dun Duncan, who was uh, also known as Man at Arms, so this one's pretty general, but we're uh, including the overall presence of Duncan, aka Man at Arms, the royal family's master of weapons. He is very gay. Look at him. Hi, Fisto. Yeah, but he was. Hang on, he was Tila's father, so you know he he hit it once. He did, you know, hook up with a girl at least once. Explain these underpants with the green tights. He's a closeted homosexual. What do you want me to If I, I you don't... saw that on an actual man, you would say, that man is a homosexual, son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would. As soon as I saw him, I would try not to look again. I'd be like, oh, what the fuck? And I would like avert my eyes and try to look at something else. Because that's fucking yeah. weird. Like a furry uh, Speedo with green, green tights. Yeah. It's hard to look at that and see anything that isn't gay. Yeah. Fucking village people mustache. They bring up in the <laughs> chat. Yep, yeah, Fisto gets a pass. That's Fisto right next Fisto to him. Fisto, sure. Holy shit. He's a middle-aged man with bare midriff armor, 
uh, 70s stash and nothing better to do than go on long trips with Prince Adam and keep his secrets. <laughs> the whole thing reeks of human growth hormone, a secret past and late night slap and tickle in the darkened corridors of Castle Grayskull. Yikes. Uh, episode four. Now, there are maybe five he these. has AIDS. Maybe he used to just like smash all kinds of puss across Eternia. And now he has AIDS. <laughs> and he's just. You think this guy has AIDS? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, fourth one, The Laughing Dragon. In He-Man uh, sister series, She-Ra, The Princess of Power, She-Ra, in an episode titled The Laughing Dragon, encounters a socially put-upon dragon named Sorrowful. What the hell is this dude up to? Oh, my God. What is this? <laughs> well, that one guy, it, his name was Bo, and it was always assumed he was gay. Like, every, was I mean, he Bo? has a heart on his chest. I, was, I, think, I thought yeah. his name was, like, True Heart or something Or like maybe that. True Heart. Maybe True Heart. Yeah, Bo. Yeah, that's a different one. Maybe True Heart. But, I mean, he was always hanging around girls. I was like, look, he can't be gay if he's surrounded nah. with, like, eight women. I mean, right? Like, he's got Look at him wild. pleasuring his, his anus on the scales <laughs> of this dragon. Look at what he's doing. I see what he's doing. Yeah, that's going right up his crack. The only, dude, and the only he's hetero it. male was that owl thing on his shoulder. That's the only thing that was smashing all that puss there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Liam Gray, that little owl thing. <laughs> Wait, they're saying his name was Bo. That's fucked up. I remember that. Oh yeah. shit. Okay. Uh, with hopes of recruiting his help against the Horde army, the show's token male Bo tries to intimidate the tormented reptile into finding its courage. However, even the bullied beast can't help but mock the ar archer, who was inexplicably chosen to wear a belted pink frock with limp-wristed jabs at Bo's masculinity. An anti-bullying episode where even the bullied bullies someone else, wait, where even the bullied bullies someone else for being different. As you can see, Bo's catty companion, Cowl, is not impressed. And this is the last one, Shane. Fisto's Forest. Oh, shit. Look at this little kid. Oh, no, Fisto. Get the hell away from oh, that man. child. Oh, my God. Yeah, Look at that white. Man. No, scroll down. Look at that white liquid. Just, oh, it, bro, it Just fuck. hitting that guy's backside all over his back. Oh, my God. Like what I shot down there, kid? Fuck, man. Oh. Put him in jail. Uh, lastly, I draw your attention to an episode called Fisto's Forest. He-Man and company is called to help some forest people whose diminutive leader, Elf Lord, has been imprisoned by a bushy, bearded bully named Fisto. Uh, Fisto, whose name can't help but bring to mind vats of aqueous cream, uh, neoprene <laughs> gloves, uh, is killing off the crops by using his oversized metal fist to create a blockage in the river. whole situation is only made more vivid by Fisto's choice to douse his opponents with a sticky white goo as a means to subdue them. Uh, so these are the gayest episodes of he I'm up. sure there are more. You can't make it up. It's it's weird. I didn't realize it until I worked with him, but JMS used to work on He Man back in the day. Yeah. He doesn't and brag about it. Like I don't I think it may be one of like his biggest his breakout writing things. Like he wasn't really doing much and then he got the He Man job. Hmm. Did you get a He Man job? Nope. I did. Uh, all right, let me see here. Uh uh, nobody wants to work, put in the work, or take critical feedback these days. Building from scratch can be daunting, says Luke Stone. Uh, Chris Graves says it helps that Kenneth Roquefort is a fuck demon in the art game. Chris Graves, Chris Graves says fucking. Oh, he meant fucking demon. Damn whiskey. Uh, fixed it says using IG and uh, WOG number one as a benchmark. Broken number one story was not great, uh, which is why it's not selling crazy. I have broken number two. Hopefully it improves. This guy's got the godlike signature or logo in his uh, avatar, Shane. Huh. Strictly that... Jake says, holy crow, Eve, yes, that bait was masterful. Thank you. I draw him out. Uh, Jay Bama fan says, why aren't these tards selling me a book? CG Slumps, that's Wiggle Wiggle, says, I'm new. What's going on? Ah, bunch of people are doing that whole... Is comics good about bending the knee? Do you have to bend the knee? Oh, they're doing that again. The poison. Uh, Literature Devil says you should actually get a comic skate ring, EVS. Everyone claims you have one. Might as well have a nice one. If anybody wants to make me one, uh, I would appreciate it. There are some people out there who make great things. You want to make me a comic skate ring that everybody has to kiss? Uh, or at least I can tell everybody that they kissed it? Uh, that would be a good troll. 
Uh, John says, I don't think Dojo Stream was complaining. I think it was a debate about what has been said behind the scenes. Also, I am not Malin's all account. Lol. I don't believe you. Okay. Uh, Luke Stone joined the channel. Thank you, Luke. Uh, Shane needs to choose dog toy merch for Accent issue number two, says John F76. There is a dog choose card that you can only get in a two pack, the Malin um, Mart Tex era two pack. And those are two different books. So go check that two pack out and get your special choose card. Yeah, do it. Your actual Taru says, Shane, why haven't you bent the knee yet? It's true. He hasn't. I'm still waiting. Uh, those Texier pages on Ghost Rider were sick, says Shantan Jetty. Yeah, uh, I I have some of the collections uh, that, that I look back at. Like some of his ink work back then, like it was insane. Like it's kind of sloppy and clean at the same time. Like he, I, you know, it, it's pretty good. Like, Tell me if this is true, Shane. This is a story that I heard was that uh, the person that was originally penciling Ghost Rider complained about Mark's inking. But the fans and the letters that were coming in were like really jamming on Mark stuff, so they just got rid of the penciler. I don't know if that's Mark. true. I don't know if that's mm. true. I, I, that, that I don't know. I've I hung out that. with I've like, hung out with what? Mark before at cons. I mean, he's a fun guy. Um, yeah, yeah. But he's got tons of stories about like the type of money he was making back in the day on royalties and stuff. You know, like. He wasn't even wor- it was funny. He's like, I wasn't even worried about my page rate. It's like, that book's going to make royalties. Because they'd have like die cut covers or something, those gimmick covers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it was like told to us at at, uh, at SVA as like a cautionary, cautionary tale of like, don't complain. You know, like don't complain about who you're working with or, or you could be you could be let go. Like just, you know, just be part of the pipeline. Was kind yeah, of the- seriously. Just be a team player, I think. Or yeah. go do a live that was, stream that was about the, bending the, the knee, one or the other. Yeah, I would say don't do the live stream about bending the knee. That would be a bad a bad choice, a poor choice. Uh, let me see. Uh, you ever think Tom, you think Tom ever energy blasts over Juggernaut's <laughs> butt, says Yurash Mataru. Uh, I think Cyclops gets involved, too. And Eric Winberg says, apparently I missed the show. Hail CG, same to you, pal. Hey, thank you guys for coming. I've been live streaming now for four hours, and I'm going to turn it uh, turn the time over to Shane Davis or anyone else uh, yeah. who would like to take over. I want to thank everybody for joining me here in the chat today uh, on this beautiful live stream. Uh, I'm not asking anyone to bend the knee at all. I, I uh, you know, in all seriousness, it, this kind of thing makes me want to stop helping, and I need a little bit of encouragement uh, to to continue to help people like this because this is really discouraging. It's insulting to know uh, that I take time that I could be spending with my family uh, and uh, and or working uh, or making a living for myself, promoting my own stuff. I turn it over to people who uh, some of which uh, think um, I am trying to dominate them in some way. Uh, people are crazy uh, and it doesn't pay to, to do favors for people like this at all. Um, I just want Comicsgate to succeed. I want Comicsgate to last. And I want sincere comic book uh, wannabes and hopefuls uh, to get a shot uh, at publishing a comic book, maybe improve and one day become half as good as Matt Six Bar uh, or Shane Davis. I um, appreciate you. I, and sure. seriously, I think um, the majority of people appreciate what you do. Like, I, yeah. I, you know, I wouldn't let a few people like discourage you in any way. Um, but Ethan, after you, you close this stream out, if you will, I got to tell you something. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, also little baby, uh, Heather Swain. Are you excited about little baby Heather Swain? I saw this. This looks good. Um, I'm, I'm wanting to know more about it though. Like, but it looks good. Like what inspired you to do this? Um, well, I, I just thought about, um, what, what people were like right before the Vespas came. And I want to show how human civilization just kind of became gay and decided to sort of bend over for the Vespas uh, because the Vespas have been hypnotizing them uh, for uh, years before they show up. Uh, And I just thought, you know, I created Cyberfrog in 1993. So that should be the beginning of the timeline in which we, uh, these characters kind of exist in a way to be examined. So in 1993, Heather Swain would have been 13 years old. Uh, it would it'd be an opportunity to show her um, in the eighth grade and in uh, high school 
meeting Anne, uh, who was dystopia, being her friend. We see their friends in Amphibionics number two. Uh, and uh, just tell the story of how Heather's life came undone as a teenager and why she would end up needing Cyberfrog in her life. Mm. Um, you know, so it's an interesting story that I think needs to be told. And I'd like to actually show it and tell it as its own story rather than just flashbacks within the main book. Uh, young Heather Swain is pretty cool. It will have Deathfly. It's going to have Dystopia. It's going to have a lot of classic Cyberfrog villains um, before Cyberfrog even showed up. And I think it's going to be fun. Um, Man, drawn by a pretty good. big artist. You know, yeah. so... Uh, uh, let me I can't see. wait to see the that's artist reveal. That's uh, something that's driving me insane. Queen B <laughs> says, uh, Cyberfrog is sublime. Oh, thanks, Queen B. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, people want to know about Jack Show. Uh, what, what channel is it going to be on? I have no idea. Do you know, Shane? Are you going to be on it? Uh, it's probably Cecil's. I'm not on it. I, I don't know. I usually go on, but I have no idea. I have no idea, guys. Yeah. We don't have John. We don't have Kelsey. What do we got? We got Anna and Cecil. You know what Choke I mean? Choke out, probably. Maybe Shane should start a live stream. Yeah. Yeah. We'll watch Shane. Uh, all right. Thanks, guys. I'll see you again uh, tomorrow with uh, another video. Take good care. Hi. I'm Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, and you're watching Ethan Van Skyver. Comic book artist extraordinaire and illustrator of my book, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos, on comic artist pro secrets. Bye-bye.